Blog Talk Radio. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this the hottest day of the week. Seen in levels in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. You have to activate the pioneer man in which I produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was gave a hard line in the sand between the different definitions of Esoteric study and exoteric study. Playtime is over. Peace, you back once again with First World Radio, your host, Dr. Aline Bay, as well as also my co host, Brother Fahim L. Are you here, brother? Uh, I tell you, watch it to East. Hey, I tell you, watch it to East, Jack. How you doing? Doing well, brother. Well, brother. How the brother doing? I'm doing good, God. All, All right. right, fantastic. We got, a, um, we got a good show for y'all tonight. We bring your brother Panic back, but we gonna flip the script a little bit, and um, he's gonna be asking me questions. So, brother Panic, are you here, God? Yes, indeed. Can you hear me, brother Lynn? <laughs> yeah, we got you loud and clear, God. Yeah, loud and clear, brother. Oh, All right. right, All right, brother L. How how did it be going over there, brother? Fantastic, brother. How the brother good, doing? Mighty. Good Almighty, haven't heard from you in a while. It's good to good to be back on the radio. I'm going to flip the script tonight, as Dr. Lean said. And after Dr. Lean does his intros, I'll be ready to get it on because I got a list of questions here that we're going to go through. So if you're ready, I'm ready, brother. Yeah, we ready to um get into it. Go ahead, oh, okay. I. Okay. Lean, see, Lean comes prepared. That's when, that's when you know you're dealing with a real master teacher. Oh, Niggas yeah. prepared. You don't need no opening speeches or nothing. <laughs> that's when you know you're dealing with the real deal, the real deal McCoy. Mm-hmm. We're going to get it on. First, I want to say um, a couple of things about Aline. Um, first and foremost, um, y'all need to really, really understand, even though I come on the show and, and run my mouth to death. Um, Aleem was actually my teacher, which for him to be as quiet as he is when he hears someone who was following him talk as much and, 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 and still sit patiently, to me is amazing within itself. Um, because let's say Bobby was hosting the show. <laughs> Y'all wouldn't hear shit from me. You know what I'm saying? Not, I wouldn't be able to get a word in edgewise. 
So just that patience that Aline has is 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 masterful within itself. And when I tell you, first and let me say this as well: if you don't know who Doctor Aline is, you're not doing shit. You know what I'm saying? He's been around quite a long time. This is about maybe ten to ten to eleven years ago when I first actually met him, and I maybe a year or two I was listening to his work before then. So around 2004 is when I actually first met him. And we're talking about this is some impressive shit. When he, the brother came through the lecture, he came through the lecture for Eye Opener, and you, I knew it was serious business because while the guy who was opening for him, Aline had about fucking three stories worth of papers stacked up to straighten this, this ruffle shit out to get into this lecture. And what I found out then which if you were to go to his website or wherever to uh, uh, get some of those tapes he's done in the early 2000s, in mid-2000s, um, Aline was one of the hardest to break down, uh, which we're going to get into some of these questions tonight, the hardest to break down um, this Bible, Quran, and any of, the, any of these religious things and place them back on their metaphysical uh, uh, uh uh, uh, pa- uh, I guess you say balance if you want to go there. But right. he he took all the meta he all the metaphysics that was extracted out of the shit that y'all still trying to make heads or tails out, complaining about how much you hate Jesus and all the rest of the things that we as conscious people usually do. What Aline um, does to a masterful level, I've never seen no one in this community do it as masterful as Brother Aline. Take all of those stories that you've heard throughout these years and insert the metaphysical science and the occult science back in it. So if you're not not aware of Aline's work, you need to get your ass in gear and start uh, getting with Aline. Go to uh, uh, com, and you can find, I'm sure, plenty of information to connect you with more of this. Very valuable information because one of the things uh, we had to – on anybody's conscious path is actually getting over this hate that you have for the religion that you were brought, brought through. And you get over that hate, and as Dr. Aleem and I were talking about, when you start to understand actually what it means. So mm-hmm. in the beginning, of course, I was like, fuck that white Jesus and all the rest of that. But when I started to study and understand what the Christ energy meant, that right. white Jesus became irrelevant. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. As a as an emotional, uh, as something I should feel emotional about, even, or or because uh, so the key is once you understand that religion, you actually start to defeat it because you you will not deny that even if your mama and father didn't go to church, one of your grandparents dragged your ass ass there. So no matter how much you hate Jesus, it's still entrenched in you. That's in fact that's why you still have an emotion called hate of Jesus because because you are still connected to your religious upbringing. So the the path to that is actually understanding what these symbols mean, this allegory, what what it means and and what they're talking about. Aline is the best at doing that. And that's what we're gonna do tonight. And th- and, and believe you me, I'm not even uh uh getting into the power and depth of this man's knowledge. You get what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm going to say it again. I find it amazing that he can be quiet half the time when um, I'm talking because of all the shit that he does know. So why we decided to do this is because Brother Leem, um, you know, he was in Atlanta. He did a lecture, and I went to the lecture off the hook, of course, plenty of information, breakthrough information for me, of course, and I'm sure it will be for anybody else. He always puts the shit in the proper perspective. And as always, if him and his queen is in Atlanta, you know they come to our house to chip. So, of course, we invited the brother and sister over, which is always a pleasure. It's some of the greatest times we spent when Aleem and his queen comes over, of course. Me and Aleem is just bullshit and staying up to like 7 a.m., Regular niggas, regular comedic <laughs> nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Ain't about ain't about nothing. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, you know, and I want to thank his queen. She hooked me up um quite well, put me in the process, started the seeds for the website, 
which now I can say that instead of, well, I'm still going to say email panicpack at hotmail.com. You're know, used to that song. But you could also now go to occultlectures.com. And um, I'm going to be uh, selling product there. You'll be able to see what up. I'm still building that site. But just like my YouTube is YouTube, Occult Lectures, and you're used to that, now the website is occultlectures.com. So y'all can go there, and like I said, I'll talk about that more in the future. And I want to thank Aline's Queen for hooking me up. When I tell you she's a genius within herself, <laughs> she's a genius within herself. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you know, so, I mean, again, and uh, before we get into Q&A, the one thing I do have to say is one of the things I've trained myself to do is any room that I walk in, I can feel the weight of the spirits inside that room, heavy, negative, and, and primarily from people's thought forms. So if I go into a, a office or a, uh, I walk into a hospital, I can feel the actual weight. And most people feel it when they go into a hospital because there's so much of it, but in almost in any room. When I tell you this shit, and I mean this shit, and I haven't told the lean yet, after the lean left our guest room, the fucking room was so spiritually clean. Mm. I don't think I felt that shit in my house out of all the shit I've done. It was fucking lighter in that room than when we gave it to the nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, God damn. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to take off my clothes and go to sleep. It was just so, that's just how peaceful it is. You know what I'm saying? And what that tells me was, was when you, if you ever to was me to leave, like you couldn't even see him or his queen with, a, with one hateful thought. It's like you could feel that they don't operate like that. And so going into that room, it was clear, because cause, cause I'm going to find out from anybody what's really going on. And it's not necessarily hate towards me. It's just if something heavy weighs on their mind. You could say, they ain't got shit that's weighing on their mind. It's like this shit is, like, amazing when I, when I went in that room after those spirits. So, so I've seen all of this so y'all know. If y'all don't know already, this is some real deal guy. Y'all need to reach out to him in anything that y'all can either receive for him, work with him on, or whatever. Like, y'all dealing with a real motherfucker, not just an Internet phenomenon. You get what I'm saying? This is some real old, this is some real teacher shit. And is, I think it's important for anybody on their path to try to see what he has to offer. One of the things he does offer is that class, and you need to get with him to see how that works. And I believe he does have a whole list of people on his website that um, uh, give testimony to them after they take the class. I know Michael Pratt uh, took the class, and he can't stop talking about it. It is absolutely worth it. They have a payment plan. I believe it's over four months. I'm sure Aline will be happy to talk about it. But if you're serious about your shit, this is the type of shit you do. These are the motherfuckers you want to surround yourself with because I am absolutely clear. As I'm clear about myself, I am clear about a lean that he came to this planet to do exactly this. This is not a hobby or something he does on the week. This is exactly, this is one of the ones that came back to teach your black ass. Take advantage of you in the air shot. All right, so now that I, now that I did all the <laughs> nipple rubbing, I could possibly do. We're gonna get into these Q and A. And believe you me, I I, I I don't I do not speak for this lightly. I need to get with him. This motherfucker's a genius. When I if you get that elect, I went to that fucking um lecture in Atlanta. He just just did. Your your mouth would drop at all the symbolism this this dude can break down, which I'm we're gonna get a taste of tonight. All right. So finally, we're gonna get to these Q. In A questions, now that the uh, Negroes are in the room and we're all ready. All right, so let's go start getting down to it. All right, so the first question I have for Dr. Aline is something that I notice in the black community, and I would like him to break down the differences. And what I notice is uh, most conscious people, and uh, they have this mentality that just because we're black, you know, we're better. And um, I just want you to point out if, do you think or could you lead us to understand, is there some work we have to do to actually realize that power? 
besides just saying, well, we're black and we have melanin? Are there things we could do to enhance it or activate it? Well, yeah, no doubt. Um, melanin is what we call black energy, dark matter, personified. I call mm-hmm. it melanin is the physical um, counterpart to the spiritual soul. Mm-hmm. But melanin has to be cleansed, and how you do that is through vitamin B2, B6, B12. On a daily basis, so that means eating a lot of green leafy vegetables because there's only one difference between melanin and chlorophyll, and that's one that needs the molecule. Mm-hmm. So, um, you need to definitely eat some spinach, some kale, um, some broccoli, whatever else that is that is green leafy, you know, on a daily basis. Um, once you okay. learn how to do that, um, then you have to learn how to harness energy, in which that we spoke about before. There's three areas in your body where you actually store energy at. The first is your dantian, lower dantian, which is called your navel chakra. The second is your heart chakra. The third is your third eye. So mm-hmm. um, if you want longevity, a healthy life, then you store energy in your belly button or your navel. If you want compassion, mercy, love, then you store it in your heart. If you want intelligence, high IQ, genius, you store it in your third eye. Um, so those are the three places that you store and harness energy at. So, and so you want to learn how to do what is called a microcosmic and a macrocosmic orbit technique and circulate the energy through your body for regenerative purposes, as well as also being able to transmit that energy through your body, um, out your arms, into your hands, into another individual. Um, when you do that, I would suggest that you don't use your own personal energy, but you will use the cosmic energy so you will visualize gold energy coming down at the crown chakra, flowing through the head, down into the throat, into the heart, and then out through the arm, through the hand. And once you learn how to master that, then you can transmit the um, heavenly energy um, through your um, physical vessel. That That's the real meaning awesome. of that. Awesome. I mean, that's the real reason why we have melanin, because, I mean, melanin, the melanocytes act as black holes. So people, it's the natural you know, thing to do is to absorb energy. Absorb energy. So, if I, right. so the new person getting into it who who wasn't uh, aren't aware of their melanin, you say, like, the first step is to become aware of it. They have to at least do something to feed it or, cle- well, cleansing it, to be basically like feed right. it and acknowledge it would be like a first step for someone? Right. And also another thing in which that is real good is what is called um, star or sun gazing. Um, mm-hmm. The energy um, pierce um, the eye, the iris, it hits the optic nerve, the energy channels down through the brain into the other endocrine glands. And actually... After nine months of doing that, there is no disease in the body. Um, this is very okay. scientifically and medically that disease do not exist uh, once you learn how to learn how to start a sun game. But well, the same thing is true is that as you're using the sun, you also have to use the science of breath simultaneously. Mm-hmm. So one is dealing with the science of pranayama which is you know, what we call cosmic energy, cultivating energy, and the other is dealing with the science of breath, which is actually the science of spirit. And so um, once you connect these two, the breath acts as a medium between the cosmic energies and the physical body itself. So um, the breath shows you how to tap into the different layers of consciousness just by simply slowing your breath down and making your breath um, deeper and longer. And that causes okay. you to go into a different state of consciousness each time. Psychologically, it's called the gamma state, beta state, alpha state, um, delta state, beta, well, beta, beta state, delta state, and delta theta state. So those are what is called the five states of consciousness in psychology. Okay, we're going to, um, let's, let's do it this, because you are dropping a lot of advanced information. Yeah. So I want to, um, with basically on the stuff that you said so far, let's go into it a little bit to dissect it, so um, okay. uh, the, the new person can bridge themselves or at least know where to go. So in other words, because some of these things I can see they're going to have to learn from their class, 
some of these things you, you're going to be able to tell them, well, this is what you go home and do. So, so far mm-hmm. we've talked about three sections. So I just want to, I don't want to skip over and confuse new people because I'm finding a lot of new people are listening to our show as opposed okay. to some old pros. So I, okay. I want to start with where you started from when you said um, cleansing the melanin. Um, because usually right. that's usually the first that that what I can see is the first step for anyone who's trying to get into. It. So if I've never heard any of what you said before, which a lot of people haven't. Um, I would say, well, how do I cleanse my melanin? And you said there was some uh, B vitamins and kale. So just from the um, section of cleansing my melanin, what result would I get, or should I look for to be able to go to the next step, which I'm going to say would be the breathing technique. So what what okay. would you after doing it? What would you notice after I got into some of the B vitamins, and you know what right. what would I be what would I say what what would happen? When, what could I say to myself when I look in the mirror and say, "Now I feel my melanin is cleansed because." Okay, let me explain this to you. Vitamins, um, in order to be activated, have a catalyst called minerals. Um, the particular mm-hmm. minerals in which they act as a catalyst, vitamin B. Vitamin E, vitamin A, and vitamin D. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, in that particular, well, those particular vitamins also along with the uh, vitamin B. Uh, but you mm-hmm. have selenium, magnesium, as well as also manganese. All right, um, mm-hmm. all the minerals that correlates to those particular um, vitamins. Now, mm-hmm. water is also essential. You know, alkaline water at least water in which that is like 7.4 pH balance. Um, pH means um, power hydrogen. That means mm-hmm. um, how much power is in that water. You know, um, okay. you know H2O, you have hydrogen, um, two-part oxygen. Um, mm-hmm. So um, it tells you how much that hydrogen um, is the power of it, and so if it's like 7.4, that is about the same as your blood and your plasma in your body. So the mm-hmm. water helps with the cleansing process. Um, the sun helps with mm-hmm. the cleansing process because the sun has been known to be able to destroy viruses, bacteria, and ultraviolet rays in particular, cancer. Mm-hmm. All right? Um, so that means mm-hmm. that it destroys parasites, worms, uh, mm-hmm microaerobic bacteria and everything else. So the sun can also help in that process. So when your mm-hmm. body is cleansed, um, and how you notice, because you'll start to tingle it in certain areas, whether it's at the top of the head, the third eye, whether it's your hands or whether it's the soles of your feet, what's called the bubbling springs, you begin to start tingling. And that is actually showing that your body is now able to absorb energy or um, different forms of frequencies of energy. All right. So oh, okay. So, so let me. So, so I was going to say. So okay. So cleansing melanin prepares you to be able to uh, receive different forms of energy, right. higher frequency, which is basically right. just spiritual information, ancient information, right. or basically right. the information that you're seeking. So with cleansing right. melanin, you're saying um, it, it, it's the first step in preparing you to even be a receiver. Of information, right? So that's why exactly. it's important to cleanse the melanin. Right. Okay, right. That's okay. definitely less, you know, okay. That's important. Also and then, and there's also particular areas in the brain in which that um, we know that mm-hmm. we heard of um, fluoride water calcifying the pineal gland. We heard of GMO okay. food, um, you know, um, hardening the arteries and causing plaque to build up within the arteries and the capillaries, in which that causes one um, to become obese. As well as also mm-hmm. it's messed with the um, the test, test testosterone within the males and the estrogen within the women, um, you know, causing them to get out of shape and hormonally out of balance. So we understand mm-hmm. what the um, GMO food is doing. So everything that we talked about helps counteract that. These certain herbs that we can also be used, um, such as kelp, corella, um, alfalfa, dandelion, um, wheat grass. Those particular ones have high amounts of chlorophyll. Um, um, you know, like you said, you remember chlorophyll okay. and none of them is going to be magnesium difference. Otherwise, the structure of them are identical. 
Okay. Uh, Link, do you have a a, a a better mic or something, or, or could it angle your mic? It's you're a little bit blurry. I can hear you, but you're a little bit blurry. But you know, I'm, so you can get it a little bit clearer. All right. Let me. Can, can you oh, hear me now? Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, much much better. Much yeah. much better. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah, much much better. Okay. So now, okay. Now the second portion you talked about was the importance of the breath in melanin. Um, mm-hmm. So now, let's right. say I, I'm at I'm at that point where I feel my melanin is cleansed. Um, what's my purpose, or what would be the purpose of me dealing with the breath, and that, why is that important? Well, what we found out is that, according to scientists, quantum physicists, that 300,000 tons of stardust energy falls to the planet Earth daily. Mm-hmm. Scientists have stated that 90 percent of our physical anatomy is actually stardust. So okay. it's actually all mm-hmm. within the star. So that means if there's 300,000 tons of stardust energy falling to a planet, to people who is 90% made of stardust, that would mean that um, melanin actually as, acts as a bridge way for us to absorb that 300,000 tons of stardust energy into that 90%, mm-hmm. obviously to resonate us to a 100% level of our um, mm-hmm. So that means um, you have to work at it you know, in order to, of course, bridge that point, but it's through the melanin, which acts as a medium, just like your breath mm-hmm. acts as a medium as it extracts um, what is called pranic or chi energy from the oxygen, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. So, so through the breathing techniques, you're saying that we can access this stardust, um, right. which is... I guess we can look at the stardust as a form of information or, or is exactly. it a, more of a catalyst exactly. for alchemy or, or, or that would uh, inspire change in the DNA. Um, but what's mm-hmm. the primary, what would be the primary reason, I guess, we would want to believe in stardust? Right. Well, what we notice is that scientists have stated that we are only able to visibly see 10% of the universe. The other 90% is dark matter, black energy. Scientists right. also say that we're only able to use 10% of our DNA. The other 90% mm-hmm. um, goes unused, mm-hmm. right? Scientists also say that we only use 10% of our brain. The other 90% of that goes unused. Mm-hmm. Um, so we can keep going on and on about how we are not using the totality of our existence. We're not right, seeing right. What we're just we're not being what we can be. We are only a small smidgen, a 10% smidgen of who we actually are. Right. In other words, we only, you know, we only live in 10%. You know, the other 90% um, um, be a whole lot different. And when, when people talk about um, these particular gifts, miracles, um, healing, um, discerning mm-hmm. with spirits, um, communicating with spirits, or um, astral projection, Mm-hmm. Clear voice, clear audience, clear guessing, psychic chemistry, telekinesis, telepathic. All of these gifts comes from you activating the dormant portion of yourself, in which that we're talking about. Uh-huh. And the only way to mm-hmm. do that is by adding more um, stardust to the stardust body. Mm-hmm. That's the only way to okay. Do it. Okay. So okay. So the, uh, the stardust will help uh, to nourish that portion that we're trying to tap in which is basically exactly. the magical portion or the metaphysical portion or all of those ancient stories we heard about the ancient black man and black woman, the stuff that they were right. dealing with on a daily basis, which is not right. really magic. It was normal for them. So right. so this right. is, so, so the importance of learning breathing techniques, um, which I know you teach um, because when you came, um, you did a few and show, taught me a few. So I know you teach this the proper way to breathe, the techniques to breathe. You, you showed me, did some of the exercise in your lecture. So all of this basically helps to uh, get that start, get, get you get the stardust in your system to uplift your consciousness. That's You're saying that's that important. And basically yes, the cleanse yes. melanin, the yes. cleanse melanin is a bridge that um, helps that stardust basically be uh, uh, processed in the body, in the mind, and all of that. Yes. Oh, right. Excellent. Well, the stardust is the English equivalent to the Sanskrit word prana. It is prana. the equivalent okay. to the Chinese word chi. It is 
the mm-hmm. um, Japanese equivalent to the word ki. It is the Hawaiian mm-hmm. um, connection or a word, what is called kahuna mana. A matter of mm-hmm. fact, biblically, the Bible tells you about mana in which that fell from heaven. It is no right. coincidence that the word kahuna mana, you know, is the word within um, Hawaiian, in which that means the same as um, heavenly energy, celestial. Right. Right. You know, okay. So, okay. Um, you know, biblically, that would be what we call the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost, mm. the same mm. thing mm. 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 so, so there's a lot of reference, and we can get into some about the importance of the breath in the Bible. Um, right. And, and we're gonna talk, we we because we, I uh, we're gonna talk about um, some of the things that you decoded. Um, as we go on in the show, because I have them later on in the question list, we want to at least save uh, some, you know, for that. We want to save some punches for the end, right, but because right. um, we still have the question one. All right, because um, in, in I know you and I know you do speak. We're gonna we're gonna get a chance to speak thoroughly about the breath in the Bible when we get up to that portion. Um, okay, and the other thing that you added on with this one question, the next thing you talked about the importance of sun worship or absorbing sun. So now this takes us to you cleanse the melanin, and then with the breathing techniques, you energize your body with stardust. How does the sun now fit into the scenario? Right. Well, the sun, of course, is a star. And so Mm -hmm. hence, um, that star was formed, like you said in the lecture, from the implosion of Sirius B. When we look at Sirius B, um, we see that there was a release of energy, and that energy in which that was released from our sun, in which that formed our planet in this particular solar system. So actually, we are Sirius B. There's no doubt about that, mm-hmm. because the same dust um, in which that was built on Sirius B is the same dust in which that is still regulating now this particular um, experience of ours. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and which that is, you know, which is, you know, is, which is, but it's still, if you look at the way in which that the Earth and our solar system sit down when or downward from Sirius A and Sirius B, you will see that we travel around each other elliptically every 25,920 years. Mm-hmm. And as we go around each other, we're also going through the 12 zodiac signs, which is every 25,920 years. So... Mm-hmm. It's a perfect um, elliptical pattern and circular pattern in which that is taking place here, um, in which that we call it um, revolution and evolution, you know. But um, mm-hmm. really, you know, everything in which that we, you know, refer to that as those particular concepts is actually um, the mind operating in different spheres of states of consciousness. Okay. You know, that goes back mm-hmm. to the book uh, by Michael Talbot, The Holographic Universe. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay, so um, so so dealing with the sun, are you tapping? You're you're, you're enhancing that or tapping into that uh, level of consciousness? Right. Well, because, you're tapping into. Um, that's that's why we was called sun worshippers um, for mm-hmm. you know pagans and heathens, you know, for hundreds and thousands of years yeah. know, by the Europeans, because they did not understand, nor could they. Um, you know, handle the frequencies of the sun. Um, right. So, of course, okay. we, within our particular yoga system, you know, whether it's Egyptian yoga, whether it was Hindu yoga, whether it was Buddhist or, you know, Taoist, you know, or Tibetan, um, these yoga, mm-hmm. these yoga, which the word yoga just simply means union, meaning of lower self and higher self, become one self, which is, you know, essentially the higher self is, you know, um, so the sun itself helps with us tapping into our full potential. It helps change uh-huh. the DNA. Children now are being born with not just two strands of DNA, but three strands of DNA, and we are developing uh-huh. to a 12 strand DNA being 12 physically and 12 etherically, which is actually 24 uh-huh. strands. And so this uh-huh. is taking place right now, and there's actually many people on the planet who actually have 12 strands of DNA. Ah, okay, okay, interesting, interesting. Now, yeah. I've seen in your lecture you showing, which I noticed 
but until you broke down the symbology, it became absolutely clear. A lot of stuff you did with um, Agnaton's cellar uh, reliefs, and, and um, I guess you could tell us just a little bit about those uh, hieroglyphs and what you decoded in those, with the, in terms of the, in terms of how it fit with sun worship. Right. Well, what we were talking about that this solar activity and its effect on the Earth. Um, mm-hmm. Right now, we're going through um, what is called Solar 24, with the solar flare um, eruptions in which that is taking place, in which that billions of tons of of um, super hot gas containing charged particles are bombarding the planet Earth and being drawn through the pole. So we know we have mm-hmm. the North Pole, the South Pole, which is called the you know Northern and Southern Light or the Aurora Borealis. Which collide, mm-hmm. which you know, which actually collide with the atmosphere, causing polar these polar light. Now, mm-hmm. that means as this energy is coming in, we ourselves are also taking in these charged particles. And it's a known fact mm-hmm. that if you get the book The Ark, um, I think Brother Heru, introdu- um, um, he's the wife, he's the husband of Queen of Four. He wrote the introduction mm-hmm. for that book The Ark, and um, mm-hmm. there are um, many states in there that melanin is always able to um, take a charge. But in the mm. third dimension, there's an energy gap in between um, in the melanin. Mm. Now, if there's an energy gap in the melanin, and the melanin is always able to take a charge, what is it being charged with? It's being charged with these star um, dust particles that we're talking about, this mm-hmm. super high gas. Mm-hmm. You know, so... Mm-hmm. Um, the ancients knew this, and so you can see Akhenai with his wife Nefertiti and their children outside in front of Aten, and the rays of the sun is coming down like hand. Hand symbolizes the ability to the heal because there's 29 compartments in the brain dedicated to the hands alone. All right? And so you will see and count actually 29 rays um, um, coming down from the sun in which is being shown upon Akhenai and his wife and uh, Uncle Anton, his wife Nefertiti, and their two children. All right? right. So that's, this that's is right. to the fact that these 29 compartments in the brain are being activated, mm. you know, by the sun. And mm-hmm. once you start realizing, you know, the correlation that the ancient Egyptians or Kemites or, you know, Tamarians had with nature, um, they was already the practitioners of what we would call now Qigong or Tai Chi. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a known mm-hmm. fact that Bodhidharma, you know, um, left from out. He was from the Tamil people, which is actually the followers of um, Atun Ray. And mm-hmm. they, he left from out of India, all right? He would be called what is called the Sudra people. In other words, the untouchables now, because he was so dark-skinned, right? right? Mm-hmm. But he left from out of India, and he traveled into China um, to uh, what we would call, you know, um, the the Shaolin warriors. Mm-hmm. And when he went to Shaolin, um, those there, the Shaolin priests, many of them would fall asleep um, during meditation. So he would teach mm-hmm. them movement meditation, in which that became known as the Eight of Gohan um, um, style, which is actually the beginning stages of what we call Qigong, Tai Chi. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he began to teach them um, movement meditation. And so, in, a, in essence, it's taught them how to be a sun worshiper. And this is actually mm. this is the one that immigrated uh, melanin people from being sun worshippers because we they knew that this is the connection between our melanin and the sun. Now, it's no coincidence that nowadays scientists are saying that, well, you know, um, you know, black people need at least one to three hours of sunlight a day. All of a sudden, they right. turn this down to be back to being the sun worshippers now. Mm. Right when they you know, right when they, they were saying you need to get our asses out the sun. Yeah, exactly. That's true. That's true. Right now they were saying that we need to get out the sun, but now all of a sudden they say, "Well, the we body needs to get our your body back don't, in don't operate to its fullest extent, and it don't become absorbed, you know, as you know, as a hormone into the bloodstream until you have at least one to three hours of sunlight a day." Now that's miraculous because, mm-hmm. like you said before, you say stay our ass without the sun. You need right. you need sunblock. You need sunscreen. Right, right, right. 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 I remember, I remember they said even black people need sunscreen. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. That's what they was telling us. 
Wait, so, see, okay, so now, now they're saying we need to get back in the sun. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be solar people, and we don't get enough sun. Uh, I, I remember, uh, I remember someone saying, but now it makes sense after hearing you say this, Aline, that um, that uh, we we need to be black people being in the sun actually absorbs um, energy because without us being in the sun, exactly, um, um, and not absorbing the energy, it actually fucks white people up. So, exactly. so right. I remember some lecturers are saying, but they didn't say for they didn't go into the detail that you just broke down. They went into just just we need to be there because we need to absorb it for you know the melon otherwise it stays in the atmosphere and could tear their asses up. So we need to be. So, but I, I see now, um, even if that lecturer didn't know all this detail, I can see where that's what he meant. That's what he means. We need to absorb this energy because it's here for us. It right. makes so much sense. Makes so much right, sense. and, and okay. that's why I that's why I call it Psalms eighty four eleven, where it says, "For the Lord God is a sun and a shield; mm. Mm. the Lord would give mm-hmm. grace and glory. No good thing would be withheld from that walketh uprightly." So here it is; it's saying that if you walk uprightly, and then mm-hmm. saying that God is a sun, and then you have a shield, all of this is correlated right there within Psalms eighty four, you know, eleven. You know, mm-hmm. the shield is your melody. Mm-hmm. Shield the melody. Okay. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. right. And the sun itself is what deals with the um the center force of that what it says, that that walk of uprightly. That's what gives you um the ability to have that grace and that glory. You know, mm-hmm. as it is saying. Mm-hmm. Right. And how we mm-hmm. know that because um I, I gave an example how ancient people worship the sun, build pyramids you know, for free energy and had a lifespan of a thousand years plus. Well, moderate mm-hmm. people are smarter, at least they assumed it to be, and that is mm-hmm. why they worship a man, you know, a white man, particularly if he's melanated, that, never, that they never met. Pollute the very water mm-hmm. that they have to drink with fluoride, the air that they breathe, you know, with chemtrails, and eat GMO mm-hmm. foods, and they die very young as a result mm-hmm. of having no respect for them. So, Mm. Who am I going to follow? <laughs> the ancient? You're right. Right. Or those who get ready to be the ancient. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Oh. right. 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 Those who are about to be the ancient. <laughs> All right. Right, right. Very detailed. Very detailed. Okay. Very detailed. Very good information. And I do understand. And I, I'm sure that people starting out should understand that. And for the breathing techniques, um, I believe that Lean teaches this in his class, so y'all need to get on it. You know what I'm saying? Get on it. And he also teaches you technique, and and I know he talked about it in the lecture, how to receive the sun, um, which is which is real interesting, real interesting. All right, I have another question, Aline, that semi doesn't really, but semi changes the subject a bit. Um, I want to deal with the heart versus the brain. You know, we we hear that the heart is the center of the center of consciousness, the brain is the center of ego. So spiritually, metaphysically, occultly, um, uh, let's talk about some things in the heart versus the brain, how to energize the heart, open up the heart chakra. Are there things and portions in the brain that matter more than that gray matter? You know, think, you know so people will be clear on how to focus their energy and what they're focusing in these places for. Right. Well, when we look at the scale of balance of my yacht, you know, everyone mm-hmm. want to talk about it, but I've never heard him. I never heard anyone decode it properly. But right. here it is in the scale: the heart is balanced against the feather. All right, that's a mm-hmm. beautiful thing, and everybody can see that, and that's what we've been told. But let's go a little bit further with it. Um, we know that the heart is the middle point between the seven chakras. Is the midway point. Mm-hmm. You got the three right. lower chakras, then the heart, and then the three higher chakras. So the heart mm-hmm. is the midpoint. So it's talking about the convergence of earthly energy and heavenly energy converging upon the heart, and therefore um, the heart being weighed. You know, in other words, if the good um, overweighs the bad deeds, then the heart is lighter than the feather. However, if the bad deeds over Wait, the good deeds. Now, of course, this is all metaphysical. This is metaphor. It, we're talking about in the mm-hmm. sense of people's attachments to the earthly plane. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, if they have 
certain addictions. You know, they have, you know, eating addiction, drinking addiction, you know, drug addiction, mm-hmm. or whatever the case is. They have these addictions, and they care more about that than their physical self and their spiritual self. Then more than likely, there's going to be a correlation of um, these attachments at the heart. So right. that's why um, you have the canopy jaws in which that, um, for example, the heart is saved. You know, mm-hmm. um, the brain, you know, they don't worry about the brain. The brain is just right. a receiver, you know, and a transmitter, you know, mm-hmm. um, for the mind. The mind mm-hmm. goes into the accumulation of the heart because it is the building up aspect of um, of the heavenly force and the earthly force all in one. So mm-hmm. um, when the heart is weighed against the scale, and plus another thing in which that was important is that a person who incarnates or will no longer have to incarnate depends on the matters of the heart. For example, if the Kundalini is trapped below the heart chakra into the solar plexus, into the navel chakra, into the root chakra, base chakra, at this call, then a person will have to reincarnate again because they did not raise the Kundalini energy above the heart chakra in order to make it lighter than the feather. All right? Okay. So when the Kundalini goes up above the heart chakra into the throat, into the third eye, into the crown, then it is lighter than the heart, as they would say. And the feather is actually the serpent itself. That's what that is actually symbolic to. The two um, mm-hmm. aspects of Shu, all right? Shu um, is known as the personification of air, which is the breath. But the mm-hmm. feather was an aspect of Shu, and so is the serpent. An aspect of Shu. Mm-hmm. And Shu mm-hmm. is nothing mm-hmm. more than Yahshua, as we know later on in the Bible, is Jesus, who said, Be mm-hmm. wise as, and be and gentle as doves, but yet wise as serpents. You know? mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. that is correlating to the same thing here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting. Now, so, so ultimately, I like when you said that when you, when you make the transition, the mind, which we've uh, uh, come to think is in the head, is actually in the heart. And, right. And, well, uh, mm-hmm. right. The soul itself, what happens is that the soul has left the body, and with it, it is taking the emissions in which that, or the transmissions in which that has been, or as we would say also, emissions in which that has been put upon the heart itself. And the mm-hmm. center of the brain is the pineal gland where the soul is embedded at. But the soul is taking all of that with it. So, therefore, the heart is a remnant, is a physical remnant of that which that was taken by the soul. That's why in the ancient mm-hmm. Hermetic beliefs, it says the, the um, soul is a ba, B-A. But the heart mm-hmm. is a what? A-B, which is the mm-hmm. opposite. Right. Mm-hmm. So, the soul and mm-hmm. the heart, is, you know, the soul and the yeah. heart are yeah. ab and the the by and the app is opposite. Um, but yet oh. they're one in the same in that same sense, you know. Damn, that's that's hot. <laughs> yeah. That's hot to death. <laughs> mm-hmm. So now okay. So now the brain you pointed out is uh, basically a transmitter and receiver. So when I hear that I just right. think of it like as a television or a monitor. And basically right. you're 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 either receiving information through it or transmitting right. information out of it. Um, right. Okay, so I know right. the brain is there in order to the brain is there in order to um, take in the rays of the sun and the cosmic energies. That's what mm-hmm. it's transmitting. Okay. All right. Okay. That's what it's transmitting, and that's what it's absorbing. That's what it's conducting. Right. It's the rays of the sun itself. That's what the head is for. That's why oftentimes in those sixteenth, fifteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth century pictures, you will see a halo. Um, around mm-hmm. the heads of the holy people, you know, um, because mm-hmm. the head symbolizes the same as that of the sun. As we broke down, it's no coincidence that the rays of the sun, it takes eight minutes, you know, the sun being 93 million miles away, it takes eight minutes and 20 seconds for the sun rays to touch the earth, but it also takes mm-hmm. eight minutes and 20 seconds for the nutrients in the blood to bathe the brain. So that's mm-hmm. no coincidence. All of that is based on the fact that we're as above, so below. Right, right, okay. Oh, wow, right. Mm. So I know you also talk about things 
that can be activated in the brain. For instance, medulla oblongata, of course, the pineal. You know, that's where a lot of, um, you know, that's why I spent a lot of what I do trying to get that get that area jumping for whatever, to get people at the foundation of whatever they want to do next, but to really get some activity there. So, but you also speak about other a- aspects in the brain in, in detail and very eloquently, I might add. Um, and some of those, right. can you share some of those with us, especially the one right. about well, to do live from that? Right, right. Well, I was a student also of C. Freeman L., um, myself mm-hmm. and Bobby, who in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And um, C. Freeman L. taught us that there's three places in which that the soul incarnates at, or three openings or gateways. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, of course, is the crown, which is the pineal gland. Another one is the medulla oblongata, and another one is the heart. Um, mm-hmm. So, as you can see, the play in between those, once again, the pineal gland and the heart, again, being said there. But like you said, let's focus on the medulla oblongata. So when you look at the medulla oblongata, um, you're looking at what is called the mouth of God, which is at the back of the head. Mm-hmm. When you do Kabbalah, um, Kabbalistic teachings, when you study the Kabbalistic mm-hmm. writings, in particular the script of Hebrew, the 22 letters, you will see that Q-O-P-H, cup, mm-hmm. so that, that is the beginning stages of what's called Golgotha in Aramaic. Mm-hmm. The word Golgotha in Aramaic means, um, in English, Mount Calvary, but Golgotha in Aramaic means the place of the skull, mm-hmm. which is talking about mm-hmm. the back of the head. Mm-hmm. Now, that is the place where they say Jesus got crucified at, all right? is on Mount Calvary or the Gotham, which is the back of the head. Gulp means back of the head, axe. These are the symbols for gulp. Back of the head, mm-hmm. skull, axe, and copy. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. also monkey. Mm-hmm. Now, this is no coincidence because um, when you look up Tahuti, right? Mm-hmm. Tahuti symbols is a monkey, which is a baboon. He's a writer of the scribes, in which they record all the good and bad deeds of the gods and goddesses or the natural rules. No coincidence, mm-hmm. in Islam, we say, turn our heads to the right, turn our head to the left, and we're talking mm. to the so-called angels who write down the good and the bad deeds. All of this symbolic to the fact of your copying something from the system. Um, you. you have what is called the um, cerebellums and you have the cerebrum. Two uh-huh. cerebellums, two cerebrums, in which that records information, in which that they see that information directly and converge it upon what is called a medulla oblongata, which is the copying uh-huh. center. All right? Now, uh-huh. no coincidence, when you, when you um, think of a monkey, you think of a, a saying in which that has been... Um, around for years, it says monkey see, monkey do. Uh-huh. In other words, a monkey is known to copy your action. All right? So that's why the okay, monkey bye. became the symbol for Tahuti or the baboon, because Tahuti mm-hmm. symbolizes the copying center. The yeah. tribe. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. right, 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 right. And this is all talking about the medulla on the goddess. So, no, Tahuti did not physically exist as an imitated bird man, um, as people would think, and all they can do is just talk about that, and, you know, but it's an actual location in our brain, and that is the Medulla mm-hmm. so, Where's that located uh, at? Where's that located? What's that? Oh, well, I just wanted to be clear so people know, because many people right, the know where it's located. located. Directly at the back of the head, right up from the spinal column, where the skull is located at. It's like that little hollow mm-hmm. area at the back of the head. That's that's the medulla on the god. Now, okay. when scientists have done research on this area, they found out that the medulla on the god is a, known as the place where past lives are located at and the ability in order mm-hmm. to have what is called photographic memory. In the occult, our reincarnations, our last incarnations, are stored there. Uh-huh. And in Taoism, it's a known fact that if you tap the back of their head, 
25 times, three times a day, you scarify, you scarify that area in which that gives you the ability in order to tap into your incarnation. That's what fire incarnation mm. So that means that you will never be at because any question that you have will always come through from another soul event because you, your soul has gone through millions of years of incarnation. So your soul mm-hmm. knows, um, you know, all the answers. So you simply are able to tap into what is called your own personal Akashic record, mm-hmm. which is connected mm-hmm. to what is called the oversoul within the occult. All right? Mm-hmm. And the okay. word of the okay. Word, you know, so um, that that particular area is very important for the storage places, you know, of your last incarnations as well as now um, consciously in order to give you photographic memory. So that's needed for a person who's taking tests, who's in school, college, whatever the case is. That area is very important um, to um, mm. actually learn about and to do your research on. All right. and, and activate. That's because when mm-hmm. I seen you teach that in the lecture, uh, sure enough, every night I've been doing that, and sure enough, my dreams, it's been incredibly lucid um, for the last few nights. So that's some shit I'm going to, uh, th- that's going to, something I'm going to be incorporating in what I do daily now. Right. Real profound revealing when you uh, drop that. Now, um, you also talked about the Camites. And if we didn't know any better, see, like, you know, white, if I was a, just a regular white guy, I would say they were obsessed with the pineals, especially all, but, but us, we know better. We know they were speaking on the importance of the pineal. So while we're here on the brain, um, um, could you share some stuff about uh, how the Camites were presenting um, the pineal to us, some of the symbolism that they left behind about the importance of the pineal, how to activate it, and how they looked at it in as a whole. Right. Well, um, there's many um, hieroglyphics, and hieroglyphs, as well as also um, well, what is called metamorphosis, in which that shows a pine cone sitting on top of their head. And, of mm-hmm. course, um, the word pineal means pine cone. Um, and so... Mm-hmm. Um, it shows you that at one time the pineal gland actually set up more towards the top of the head area, and we said that's what we found out, and that is actually what is the soft area, a soft spot on the head of the baby, is actually when the soul comes down into the body and embeds itself inside of the pineal gland. But at one time the pineal gland was about the size of a silver dollar, but it has shrunken now mm-hmm. to about the size of a pea, hence the term mm-hmm. pea brain. So that is... <laughs> That is actually what's going on. So that's where that what comes from. Wow. Right. That's where it comes from. So by raising the Kundalini, um, you cause the pineal gland to become engulfed with blood in which that swells it up once again, you know, um, now to about the size of a dime, to the size of a nickel, to the size of a quarter, mm-hmm. depending on how strong your meditations are, in which that gets you back to um, what you, you know, where you once were. Now, there's a technique your right, called the Get back to your right mind. Mm-hmm. Right. Come back right, back to your right mind. Um, mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a technique called the pranic tube breath, in which that actually, mm-hmm. you, there's a tube in which that runs from the top of the head, from that hollow area of what was hollow. You know, of course, by the time you turn seven, you know, your grandmother mm-hmm. was telling you, you know, telling you just like my grandma was, sit your little ass, hard-headed ass down somewhere. You know, right. Like, right. This shit got rocked. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. It was a tube mm-hmm. that ran from the top of the head down to the perineum, in which that mm-hmm. gave you access to drawing up energy from the earth, and at the same time drawing down energy from the cosmos. Um, the pineal mm-hmm. gland act as a step down transformer um, uh, for the endocrine gland system, and the energy from the pineal would go to the pituitary gland, from the pituitary gland to the thyroid, parathyroid to parathyroid to the thymus gland, thymus gland to the pancreas to the spleen to the adrenal glands, to um, the man, the, um, the prostate, and then the testes, to the woman, the uterus, and the ovaries. So mm-hmm. the energy mm-hmm. comes down into the body, down to each little entity that is going to create what is called hormonal imbalance. So this pranic to breathing was very important in ancient Kemet, and um, actually it was actually um, shown on the walls 
um, through what is called Pi. All right? So mm-hmm. there's a certain measurement on certain hieroglyphics, um, they, they actually would equal Pi, uh, which, of course, is 3.141, you know, 3. you know um, as far as the, um, the, me- the perfect measurements for the pyramids, um, uh-huh. as well as also with the other structures, as well as also the template for the physical body, you know. So uh-huh. pi is very um, is a number that you have to pay attention to, as well as also um, the golden mean ratio, and as well as also the Fibonacci uh-huh. numbers. All of these correlates uh-huh. to certain aspects of your physical body, in particular um, the structure of your physical body, as well as also um, the endocrine glands, which is called the chakras, as well as also uh-huh. Um, the frequencies in the cells in which that um, takes to activate them. Mm-hmm. 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 Interesting. Now, okay, um, so the heart versus the brain, I think we covered that. I'm trying to think, uh, is there anything else on that? Um, now, I, okay, I, I do want to ask one more thing because I hear in everyone's chakra work, they say the big deal is opening up the heart chakra. And they also, you know, uh, and I've also pointed out that that Christ energy, they show the importance of opening up the heart chakra. That's why Jesus is uh, always has this flaming heart and and his one of his hands is always pointing up as if it's pointing up to, to the higher chakras. I've also pointed out that this reference was in... Um, uh, the movie Into the Dragon, uh, when the, uh, Bruce Lee told the dude to point to the moon, smacked him in the head. Oh, Bruce Lee pointed to the moon, smacked the guy in the head, and said, if you concentrate on the finger, you're going to miss all the glory of the moon, which is another way of saying, if you concentrate on this fake image of Jesus, you're going to miss actually what the symbol is actually saying, which is pointing exactly. up. Hmm. Now, all right. um, now but, but, but still, I want you to speak on a little bit of, because even in that image, they're always pointing out, even when you hear chakra work, the importance of opening up the heart chakra. Um, so so if there's any symbolic, symbology technique, or why would you say this has always been so important? What was the purpose of that? Well, because the, the heart symbolizes the merger between the high and the lower, and everything is concentrated okay. there at the heart. Um mm-hmm. The heart happens to be one of the places, like I said, in which that you can store energy. So mm-hmm. that means you can okay. activate the heart by simply breathing and by mm-hmm. concentrating mm-hmm. energy there at the heart. Mm-hmm. And actually, you're gonna feel like a, you're gonna feel like your chest is expanding. Or um, mm-hmm. um, in the hadith, it says uh, Muhammad felt like his chest was being ripped open. You know, mm-hmm. that is all allegory. You know, but. That's what it actually feels like, like, the, like there's an expansion across your chest um, right. of the heart okay. chakra is being activated. Um, what that mm-hmm. does is just actually give you the ability to in order to love, uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Love, mm-hmm. compassion, mercy. Um, not to have to do it by thinking about it, but by doing it because it's, it's an expression and because that's how you're feeling. You know, let so me, let me, uh, it's the opening of the bridgeway between your feelings. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. let me, let me, let, and tell me if this is valid, because based, based mm-hmm. upon the work, when I felt I was getting to the heart chakra, I think I developed an overall compassion for our plight as a people more than right. individual, you know, be, you know, I, it didn't make me become a nicer guy or sweeter or more docile. But um, I've seen a bigger picture in terms of, of I felt more compassion for the soul and who we were and what we should be more than an individual human. You, you, you know what I mean? So, right. so I always wanted to ask, um, is that the type of thing we should look for? Because what I notice when people say, well, you know, if, if you go, look, I don't like you, your, your shoes look funny. Oh, your heart chakra is closed would be, would be an answer you would get. But I'm like, if when in my work, I've never seen nothing that speaks to that as opening the heart chakra. First, it becomes first self love. Then you feel more compassion for mothers instead of a particular mother, not your particular mother. But you know what I mean. Right. If you say, well, I don't like this person, it does it has nothing to do with your heart chakra. 
is just that's your right. social personality. I don't. So I'm right. asking. I guess I'm asking. Um, does that hold true? And and why I'm asking, not just for me, for many people, because right. they may be looking for the wrong thing when they're doing this work. Um, right. And okay. Yeah, I think that's the well. I definitely agree. Maybe I mean, that's, 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 mm-hmm. that's what I felt. You know, okay. uh, I felt okay. overall, you know, a compassion for humanity. You know, right. um, overall. Right. You know, now they right. of course, there's things that I did not like. <laughs> right. You know, right. Well, when I, right. Right. I didn't right. feel like, mm-hmm. I felt compassion for what humanity has now fell from. Right. And the right. compassion and love became not only a plight to help them raise that, but I could feel pity in the individual. I feel pity in the pe- right. person's ignorance. Because, you know, in the, when right. you first get into conscience, they make the separation. Well, we the special ones, and those are the dead niggas out there. And then it became right. more of, as I got into more of the hard work, it became like uh, a pity for these so-called dead ones at, at, at their potential. So all the, the it, 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 I became more compassion, compassionate for them but not at the same time ready to raise up ignorance. You get what I'm saying? Or just right. because they like Puff Daddy, I'm not going to say, well, my heart is open. I'm going to tell you I like Beyonce and Puff Daddy, too. I'm going to tell you like it is. But um, right. so, so, it, so, so why I keep um, bringing this up is because I notice most people think that their work in this is supposed to make them a better human being. So I open my chakras and my humanity becomes better. I open my heart chakra, and now I help old ladies across the street. Over my heart chakra, now I just <laughs> work for Greenpeace. But um, I just wanted to be, we should be clear, that's not actually opening up your heart chakra. You're actually opening no. up a gateway. Um, one of the things I noticed, and you can tell me if this is true as well, Lene, um, cause we're gonna, and I want to get into this in the second part of this question about the lower versus upper chakras. And to maybe set it up, one of the things I noticed is, it, it, um, in my studies that they call the heart chakra the place of the wounded child. And it, and it, right. it, it occurred to me they're talking about the place of the wounded child because the wounds happen in the lower chakra because that's where you develop your humanity and really what is, wasn't, wasn't, grant, what the, what wasn't granted to you in your humanity. So by the time you get up to being conscious in the, in, into dealing with the heart chakra, that's where the wounded child has to be released, forgiven. You really have to first develop that compassion for yourself. So, so I guess that brings us to the second part. Um, a, I, I want to ask you about a description of the lower chakras versus the upper chakras then in terms of humanity and then the spiritual part of yourself. Well, the lower self or the lower chakras or what is known as the four devils, um, within the nation mm-hmm. of God's and earth, as well as also within the nation of Islam, um, mm-hmm. um, it's called, you know, there's two selves within the more science simple teaching. It says there's two selves, um, you know, the higher self and the lower self. Well, it says the lower self, mm-hmm. um, it does everything in which that harms. The higher self is the mother mm-hmm. of virtue. Um, so mm-hmm. essentially what it's talking about is that the lower chakras have a um, tendency to have a person um, relegated as far as the brain usage is to the reptilian portion of the brain and to the limbic portion of the brain. Mm-hmm. They never reach into um, the higher portion of the brain, which would be the um, neocortex mm-hmm. and the frontal mm-hmm. lobe. That comes with the mm-hmm. chakra going up and, you know, above the throat chakra into the third eye and the crown. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And that's the Kundalini moving through those particular areas. Now, when the energy of the Kundalini is only there within the um, first four chakras, and at 19.5 degrees, there's an upswelling of energy, and there's no coincidence that the Quran says um, the number 19 is over, you know, that 19 is over it. Um, that symbolizes, mm-hmm. if I took a tetragrammaton, or what is called tetrahedron, the six-point star configuration, and overlaid it over the human body and did 19 degrees or so, 19.4.5 degrees, uh, we would see an upswelling of energy, you know, at that particular area. That's the Kundalini, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So with that upswelling of energy, uh, we understand is that that energy being trapped in those four lower chakras have a tendency of a person to um, exhibit traits or, or attributes, which is lust, greed, jealousy, and envy. 
Now, mm-hmm. of course, if a person, you know, critique, you know, critique themselves, you know, then um, and you know, and abolish, you know, abolish, you know, um, them, um, abolish themselves and and say that they do not, you know, like those traits within themselves, and that they need to work on themselves, and they actually are sincere about doing so. Um, then, mm-hmm. you know, they can go into the higher chakras. Now, mm-hmm. can you get to the higher chakras without your lower chakras? No. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you need your lower chakras. But the thing is, is that you have to learn how to um, use them positively also. They're known as the ah, devils yeah. because oftentimes the majority of people use them negatively. And they only mm-hmm. exhibit those negative traits. But they are positive mm-hmm. traits for the lower chakras. Right. You know, like, for example... Um, the root chakra, yes, is red, and yes, that's the color of the devil, or Uriel, which is Lucifer, um, and the Kundalini mm-hmm. dwells in that abode area. However, mm-hmm. um, negatively, yes, you can have um, anger, but positively, you can have passion. Right, right. You know? Um, so, right. these chakras have a parallel within itself or polarity within itself of, of negative and positive or magnetic and electrical or whatever term that we want to say, yin and yang. You know, so mm-hmm. um, it's just the fact that the most, the majority of people on the planet, seemingly being that they've not taught these spiritual teachings, exhibit right. those um, negative qualities mm-hmm. of those four lower chakras. Right. Right. Because yeah, most chakras books you read you know, I mean, the, you know, and it's, and it's pretty much standard information. They'll tell you there's basically three states of your chakras, either underactive, overactive, or balanced, which is what they're trying to go for. So they tell you there's a positive and negative side to, uh, you know, each chakra. And, you know, they tell you things of how to, if, if, you know, and then they'll give you the whole scope of emotions. They actually, well, I'm saying, hey, I'm actually doing that in my book in one of the chapters, a whole scope of emotions. And if you suffer from any of these emotions, positive or negative, it'll tell you what other colors and, and deities, uh, scents and things you could do to switch, you know, to either uh, either um, uh, active, uh, add energy or take energy away from that, that lower chakra. Then it goes on um, to say, like, um, you can have access. Now, tell me if this is wrong, Aline. You can actually have access to higher chakras, but if you haven't dealt with some of the issues from the lower chakras, those same human uh, uh, problems or the same human, uh, uh, I I guess say, issues um, will taint what's happening in the higher chakras. Like, for example... Uh, if you haven't dealt with the lower yeah. chakras, and, and let's say mm-hmm. we're in in, in the uh, solar chakra where um, it's about where where your uh, self esteem, let's say, may 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 rest, and you have a problem because everybody in high school used to chase you or bother you. So let's say you mm-hmm. read a book about chakras and read a book about how to channel. They say like now when you channel, instead of people. Uh, uh, always tormenting you, it'll be like, well, there's a spirit always after me. There's a spirit. If you don't do that, the spirits are going to get you. The spirits are going to get you. So each reading you read or each thing you get is always the same negative thing that happened in the solar chakra with people. So if you were to get rid of that anxiety, let's just say, and you become pure of heart, when you're dealing with the uh, pineal gland, what you're getting from the spirit world becomes untainted with your personal issue because you've dealt with or, or balanced the lower chakras. And I, and I know you talk about uniting upper in middle Egypt is the symbolism that happened, something like that. So is that true? That's something I was dealing with. And I want to know, based upon your study, how true does that sound? Oh, that's, that's, that's exactly true, huh? Um, oh, okay. Right, good, you good. can have the three higher chakras resonating um, pretty well as far as um, when you do a Korean photography, um, flash, you know, uh-huh. a picture. But the, right. three, but the three or four lower chakras could be, you know, um, almost double. Mm. You know, because mm, like you said, they haven't dealt with, um, they haven't dealt uh-huh. with, you know, in the totality, you know, those attributes which that are exhibited from those particular chakras. In other words, they're operating um, basically from ego. 
Right. Got you, know? you from their ego, so right, that's, their that's personal the, agenda. Right, yeah, their own personal, personal agenda. agenda. Exactly. Right. And they're still and the whole right, and they're still being controlled by those by those four devils. You know, and right. therefore they themselves are actually a devil, even though they assume to be um a light being. This is where it comes right. when the scriptures talk about, you know, that um even the um even the devil can transform himself into an angel of light. That's what that is talking right. about. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Wow. Now I get it. So basically, when you come before devils, if you haven't dealt with that, all your so-called spiritual shit that you're dealing with is nothing where we can get that line. The devil is a liar because it's basically a lie. Right. So it's you. It's, yes. it's you. Just basically, it's your humanity that's actually radiating. It has nothing to do with your true spirituality because you haven't gotten your humanity out the way, really. You haven't, and really exactly. getting it out the way doesn't mean ignore it. It really means deal with it, actually. You know what right. I mean? Deal with it until you get past it. And and you know I you, you know I explain this in de- in detail in my classes because it's because the detail that's missing, which you can't really do on the radio and on blog talk, is when you hear me saying, "Well, you have to get over your humanity. You got to stop buying into humanity." The actual detail is you actually have to stop buying into your lower self. <laughs> and and again, when I when I use this phrase, the place of the wounded child, you really taking a self reflection and saying, okay, I forgive my mama, I forgive my father for you know for either being there or not being there. I forgive all of these people, realizing that they're only human too. So right. then you create this compassion. You create you 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 see most people walking around the planet really not even knowing it's from their parents is mad about their parents or some shit that happened that they did or didn't do that was developed. They, they think it developed their personality, which is a part of their ego, in the uh, solar chakra. So by the time they get to the heart chakra, they're just raising up their ego. So now this person that was created in solar chakra is in your heart chakra saying, no, I'm a good person. I demand it. You know what I mean? You ever see white people demand and prove how good they are? They're so arrogant at right. whole food. And they're mm-hmm. arrogant when they're like, I recycle. That's yes, because exactly. they took what's in their solar chakra and, and they're trying to make it something in their heart chakra. I'm a nice motherfucker. I got black friends. You know what I'm saying? What's wrong with you, nigga? I got black friends. And then if they manage to get to something creative in the throat chakra or something, some, uh, something spiritual in the uh, – uh, uh, they're not getting out the crown chakra, just like they're not getting past the fucking um, – uh, what do they call it? The Van Allen belt. <laughs> not getting past the right. no, back. Not They're not getting not past the fucking crowd jack. But if they manage to get something spiritual, yeah. it's more dress up and, and pretend shit. You know what I'm saying? They start rubbing and humming. But I find black people are doing the same thing. We're mimicking it, and it's actually worse for us because we actually have a claim. You know what I mean? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's easier for us. We have melanin and dreads, and we were here forever, and we built that. And every place you go, you see a black face. So it's easier for us to take our ego and bring it into the heart chakra. So I guess the next question would be, um, what are things we could do to deal with that? How can or the best way you think um, some of us black folks on a personal mission, because you don't have to prove nothing to anybody anywhere on Facebook, but when they're sitting with themselves, what can they do to check to see if it's their ego or if it's or 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 if it's their ego or what can they do to relieve or make themselves aware of it, I would say. Right. Well it takes critical thinking as well as mm-hmm. also it takes an in depth emotional search, you know, within mm-hmm. yourself, you know, in order to figure out, you know, what is your agenda? You have mm-hmm. to ask yourself mm-hmm. that. You know, is your agenda mm. for fame, for fortune, you know, you know, whatever the case is, you know, mm-hmm. um, or is your agenda to actually um, uplift all of humanity? What is the agenda? You know, mm-hmm. and these things have to be out, you know, and mm. so you have to critique yourself. And whenever you find something which that you know is up the lower self, as we would say, then you have mm-hmm. to, you know, chastise it and, um, you know, reverse it or, as we would say, um, put a positive thought in place of that negative thought. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. you put another positive thought in place um, of it in order so that that positive thought resonates. It's just like algebra. Mm-hmm. 
you know, um, you know, you got to, you know, a negative and a positive, you know, um, but in order to, and they canceled it out, but in order to have another, um, you have to put another positive there so that it can resonate. Right. Otherwise, right. Um, right. So otherwise, you, you just, you're not getting it. You know, it's, it's right. neutralized. Neutralized. That makes, a, it, that makes a lot of that. sense. That makes a lot of sense because every negative thought, let's even say that I've ever had, you still do ponder the other side of that thought. So, for instance, if I say, well, I know I'm going to trip falling down the stairs, then you, you still say I'm not going to trip, but you yeah. balance it out. Like, you put a negative and a positive together. You didn't, you didn't say, I know I'm not going to trip, and then add something else, like, because I'm a motherfucking genius. You know what I'm saying? So now it's two positives against that negative. You get what I'm saying? It's, right. So, so I, get, I give you, like, because every negative thought we can have, we're going to say, we're going to at least think the opposite, but we don't. Exactly. More than just thinking the opposite, we need to add one more. You know what I mean? I give that exactly. that was real interesting, real profound, real profound. All right, so I mean, so people, so it's clear people need to understand more than saying, "Oh, my chakras are this," or "My chakras are that." Understanding these areas and understanding each emotion, balance the negative with it, and then um, do a self test, a self reflective thing, like you said. And really deal with the technique that I use too, God, in which that is called Reiki, or Reiki, mm. in which mm-hmm, when you're mm-hmm. pulling and going down cosmic energy into your chakras, what happens is that you begin to start seeing glimpses or flashes of the negative things in which that is stored within your chakras. Mm-hmm. And it's being shown to you because, you know, um, each of those endocrine glands are actually seats of consciousness. So mm-hmm, each mm-hmm. one is showing you visually through your mind. You know what was large there. You know what is mm-hmm. there, so that you can deal with it. You know, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. So, 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 so Reiki is technique in order to help. Mm-hmm. I, I was. Uh, I didn't want to cut you off, but I was going to ask. So Reiki, you're saying Reiki is a powerful technique to for people to get uh, who who are interested in self reflection. So they can figure right. out some of these things about self. Because this is all about know thyself, really. So they can figure out some of these things. You're saying Reiki is that technique. Right. Mm. Exactly. So now, okay, mm-hmm. okay, so now. That's, that's well, we're going we, we, to talk about, we're going to talk about mm-hmm. some of the things you do in your classes. And and is Reiki one of them? Cause, well, because, I mean, yeah. we can cut to the chase. The first time you came and right. stayed with us, um, you showed me, a lot of you showed me all the Reiki techniques in one sitting and yeah. certified me as a Reiki master, just so you niggas mm-hmm. know. <laughs> but now, so I I know it's something that you teach, and so so is that one of the things? And I don't want to because we're going to go into an area of what you're doing in your class, a breakdown when we get get there. And first, let me say this: this is going to be at least two shows. So tune in next week, the same time. We're going to pick it up, same format. I'm going to be questioning Dr. Leem on the second portion. Of of this of this series. So next week, eight o'clock Thursday, same time. We're going to do it again, and but and we're going to get a get to a point where we talk about the things you do in your class. So I don't want to give too much away about the Reiki because if it's one of the things that you do do in your class. So, but it's interesting that you speak on Reiki as a technique for self reflection. And I know I cut you off, so but you were saying. Right, about I was just rate. saying that, that that's one of the most powerful techniques that I've that I've done as far as um, in all the science of healing in which that I know in energy modalities. That's the most powerful as far as being able to reflect um, mm. and okay. you can see what was the problem in which that was being enlarged there as it comes across mm. your mind. You can actually see it. Um, mm-hmm. It would take you back mm-hmm. to an event to where it began at. But this is what, this is mm-hmm. what it does. So um, it's one of the best for for, um, for um, cleansing karma and um, cleansing um, attachments. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, so now I was always under the understanding that uh, if you had uh, like uh, what you can, they all start emotional. But I was going to say uh, you had an injury of some sort that someone, a practitioner, would have to do reiki on you. But if I'm understanding right, you're saying basically you could do it on yourself for, for 
the purpose of self-reflection as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, you don't need anyone okay. to do Reiki on you. Um, that's only mm-hmm. doing like a healing session. Um, okay. But um, a person can actually do Reiki or what is, you know, if anyone watched Karate Kid, they could do what Mr. Miyagi did and rub their hands together real, you know, real quick mm-hmm. um, against mm-hmm. each other friction. And that he mm-hmm. produces the chi within the hands, and you can just lay your hands on any part of the mm-hmm. body, and until the tingling is gone, you can redo your hands again and then take it to the next um, part of the body. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That within itself is a form of Reiki. Um, you may not necessarily mm-hmm. use the symbols, but it is still a form of Reiki and a form of healing, um, mm-hmm. you know, electromagnetic, um, what we call magnetic healing. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, okay. Interesting. So, yeah, this this is real interesting, real interesting. Now, we're going to probe more into Reiki and all this stuff when we get to the portions, um, when we get to the things that you teach in your class, the concepts. Okay, um, I'm go- I got another question, but before we do the questions, we're going to get the commercial out of the way. Of course, as you guys know, herb packs, herb packs, herb packs for the pineal gland. Shit is working miracles. Email me at panicpack at hotmail.com. Or you can start going and looking around my website, occultlectures.com, the new hot shit. I'm going to start adding more shit, and I'm eventually going to add all the products up, and, and we're going to be off and running, So, but you can email me. My class is going to start in a couple of weeks. If you do not know what my class is, it's a class for beginners as well as experts on basic magic and magic concepts. So if you want to take it to the next level, this is the class to take. And, again, you can email the people who have taken my class and ask them how they have benefit, benefited from it as opposed to taking just my word for it. And all you have to do is email me to get the prices, very cheap, payment plans and all the rest of that jazz. But now is the time to get in for this class. Also, I talked about it the last time I was on here, my girl Tiffany from uh, Detroit. She's... Uh, she took my class, but she was already on some magical shit when she got there, very deep into the fairy shit, and, and believe it or not, she makes these fucking fairy slippers that are so fucking magical. I've been rocking with these shits for a few months now, and believe you me, you will go into the next level, and you need to, she sells them, she sells them really pretty much cheap, you need to email her. Um, and, uh, you, uh, what you can do is just email me to get her email. So email me at panicpack at hotmail dot com or check out occultlectures dot com and uh that's how you get at me. Also, what you need to do is check out my brother in the struggle, Dr. Elim L Bay dot com. There you can get everything. First and foremost, he did the smartest thing because he had a store where he sold a bunch of magical metaphysical items, a uh, bunch of information that you can use. And what he told me when he came here, they just put the store online. So there's a whole heap of shit that you can get from all these supplies. And I know you need them because I get emails damn near every day about someone asking me where can they get this or that. Well, here's where you can get it. You can get it from Dr. Aline. And if you don't see it on his site, send him an email. He probably still can get a lot of this magical shit that's hard to get. And um, one of the things that you definitely should get, though, is his chakra package. He has chakra stones. If you just did all this talking about chakras, you niggas want to get some help, you need the rocks, the crystals, the gemstones that go with it. He has two versions. He has the one in the bag and he has the one in the case. He sent me, actually two, me and Khadija, the ones in the case, off the chain. And, um, you know, they're labeled all seven for all seven chakras. Like I said, I do many things with them. One of the things you could do with them, put them in the bathtub, They'll, they'll activate that water, help balance out those chakras like you need, do whatever work you need, any creative way you can put them in water. But that's what you need. You get that from DrAleemLBay.com. So, again, classes, classes, classes happening now. Get your asses in gear. Um, the classes have been absolutely fire lately. So now you want to get in. And, of course, not only do I have panic attacks, I have a shitload of magical supplies, baths to clean your auras, uh, uh, your aura, um, uh, different versions of herb packs, all to get in that brain, open up the pineal, and it's on and cracking. If you're serious about your shit, we the people that you need to come to to help practice this shit. And that's going to lead me to my next question. 
because what I notice in my classes, when I give my classes, when I ask questions, people seem to be good, Dr. Lean, on information, but when it comes to activating the information, that's where we start falling short. When I start asking, well, okay, you know, you do, you know, I ask priests, well, what are the chakras? Vortexes, gateways, uh, 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 wheels of light. I say, okay, but what does that mean and what does it do and how do you activate it? Then I hear a hush. So people have heard all the blog talks, Mm -hmm. all the YouTubes, all the lectures, so they know how to say and repeat all the information, so much so in a social network they know how to seem very intelligent. But, But what I do know and why I know I can ask these questions in my class and why I know we can we need to deal with this now is because nobody is bridging how to do the practices that actually work and they experience these things. So the next question is for the um, average person that's just coming into con- consciousness, what are some of the first physical things they can do so they can start experiencing some of these concepts that they keep hearing about? Yeah. Right. Well, I give a good example. Um, I just got back from Houston, Texas, a couple of days ago. Um, mm-hmm. While I was there, I taught this brother how to do. Um, actually, several months ago, I taught this brother how to do the pranic breathing, which is um, mm-hmm. pranic healing breath, which is actually six three six three. And he had, at the time, had prostate issues. He was going to mm-hmm. the doctor, so forth and so on. And I taught him that breathing technique. Well, Mm -hmm. that was back in August of last year. This year, um, you know, and actually this past weekend, he came up to me and said, man, I just want to thank you. He hugged me and everything. He said, man, I've been doing a six-week breath. He said, man, I don't have any prostate issues no more and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I went back to the doctor. I'm good. I'm good. We know that the breath, you know, has a healing quality to it, you know, and mm-hmm. so what happens is that once we learn how to um, inhale deeply, exhale, um, you know, longer, you tap into different states of consciousness. And then mm-hmm. what I discovered is that if you add what is called the, um, the inner smile technique, which you smile mm-hmm. down into your organs, and then mm-hmm. as you're smiling down into your organs and you add, um, you know, the movement of the prana or the chi to that particular organ, um, mm-hmm. that promotes the greatest form of healing. This is where you get your miraculous healing from when people are in the um, hospital and um, mm-hmm. in particular, you know, with deep blood type, you know, they're in the hospital, they got this, you know, wish that the doctor saying they're getting ready to die, but miraculously they heal. Mm-hmm. You know, that okay, comes from... Got... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, no. I, um, I just had a question. I don't want to interrupt what you're talking about. Very good. Two questions, um, because uh, I'm sure people are asking this. When you say moving energy, how did, um, once yeah. they learn the proper, let's say just the standard, the proper inhale to take breath in deep and the proper exhale to release slowly, and they start, let's assume they can uh, get this or figure that out or um, that's the first step they figured out. How do they go about moving the energy? Are they visualizing it moving? Are they physically moving air in their body? Like this, um, what would the average person who's never heard that before need to understand from you on how to do that? Okay. Um, what happens is that energy falls short. So wherever you mm-hmm. put your thought at in your body, for example, if you're mm-hmm. having pain okay. in your liver. So you know your liver is on your right side. Um, it's mm-hmm. hurting. So you would take your thought, and then as you're mm-hmm. smiling down to your organ, to your liver, you're also going to mm-hmm. send prana, which is once you inhale, mm-hmm. and then as you exhale, you're going to send a warm system to there also. Mm. Oh, okay. So energy follows So as you exhale, that warm sensation is going to be lodged into that liver area in order to continue dulling Mm. that pain until the symptoms are gone, until, you know, the liver is Mm. healed once again. Mm. Okay, so basically once you take the air 
and um, you um, in the, in once you just breathe in that context, you're actually pulling prana off the standard oxygen, and then with your thoughts, right. because as right. you said, yeah, energy follows thought. Like, you are you are actually extracting the prana actually from the oxygen. Exactly, the oxygen goes to the cells, but the prana mm-hmm. is going to the liver. Right, becomes the, a different type of food, uh, or right. a different it's type a different of energy food. than right. just the standard, right. standard air right. that we used to breathe in one day. And mm-hmm. um, so, basically, with your visualization, your thought, you you are sending with your thoughts to that particular ailing organ, mm-hmm. and and that's how you're moving the energy or moving the prana mm-hmm. or chi right. to to that. Right. Excellent. Okay, so now now this. So the second portion was, so your recommendation, you would say, for the person coming into consciousness, one of the first things he could do to start activating parts of his body is breathing. That would be the first thing you would say they need to do? Right. Um, mm-hmm. Anyone dealing with any type of um, health issue, um, that would be mm-hmm. the first thing that you would want to work on. And mm-hmm. what we notice that you get the expansion of the auric field when a person practices the 7171 breath technique or the 1663 mm-hmm. or the those three particular breaths, which is called pranic healing breath, either mm-hmm. one of them three which you practice have a tendency of expanding the auric field from three feet to 15 feet around you. So therefore, mm-hmm. that type of expansion, um, the leaks and holes within the auric field, um, within the auric field, um, fills <coughs> in. Um, there's no more leaks and holes, the attachments, which is negative thought mm-hmm. forms, so which that possibly could have been attached or whatever the case is, those particular um, entities are released. So mm-hmm. now you're only dealing with your own energy because that's the whole problem is that a person's orbit field obviously is under three feet around them in which that is causing these holes and leaks, causing the, um, um, the traumatic experience, you know, uh, what is called the dis-ease within the body, um, because mm-hmm. there's negative thought things that could possibly be attached or either detrimental mm-hmm. thoughts from themselves. Um, and with yeah. that, you know, by expanding the auric field, helps release all of that negativity and get them back mm-hmm. on the road towards recovery and back towards the road of, um, you know, being a um, healer. Okay. Now, I'm, now, as you can see from the questioning, I'm playing the role of a person who I would, I'm, I'm acting as if I'd never heard this before. So right, right. The six, the six three breath. Um, what would be the six three breath? Right, you'll breathe in for a count of six, which is six seconds. You'll hold six, it for three seconds. seconds. You breathe out for six mm-hmm. seconds, and then you hold it for three seconds and start to count over again. Um, the okay. best way is to do one hundred of them on the one hundred breath. But I've noticed around the eighty four, in the eighty four mm-hmm. and the one hundred breath, you'll feel the expansion of your aura instantly. You actually feel mm-hmm. if you're sensitive to no. um, Okay. But that's what it is. You just simply breathe it for six seconds, hold it for three seconds, breathe, in, breathe out for six seconds, and hold it for three seconds. That's it. And then just repeat that 100 times. Um, okay, so you breathe. About you breathe. So you basically. Right, it takes uh-huh. about 20 minutes to complete. Okay. So it takes about 20 minutes to. And basically, you breathe in. Do, are you intaking air for six seconds? So you're breathing yeah, so really you're slow, breathing the nose, and you're pulling it in into the belly the button. Seconds, and you're mm-hmm. right. So you're doing the Buddhist breath. So you're breathing in, and mm-hmm. your belly is getting big. As you breathe in for the six, you hold it. Mm-hmm. And then as you exhale for six seconds, your belly get you know, deflated. And then you hold mm-hmm. it for four seconds, and you just repeat the cycle over again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, see, with something like that, I guess this should work, so I, I'll recommend it. You tell me if this is wrong, and I recommended this before just to get a metrodome. And uh, a metro, you know, they have the electronic ones now. And actually, people found it online, and I recommended it for uh, other meditations. But you can put it on sixty seconds. You know, you can put it where it beats on seconds, and that'll help you keep count. You know what I mean? You know, instead of having to count with your mind, I guess. Because I'm sure by now you know how to do it without even counting. Um, I right. guess, uh, I don't know, you tell me if that's wrong, because, you know, it clicks in that second, so that, you can that, clap that is one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, I, so I, then I'll recommend that. 
So now I'm still um, – now you said that the aura expands. Um, could you explain what the aura is just for the person who's never heard yeah. this? And you, you, right. you did go into a little bit why it's important for it to explain. But what generates the aura? What, what symbology is the aura? And is there any Bible symbology of the aura? Right. Well, these these endocrine glands that we talked about earlier, the pineal, the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, the thymus gland, mm -hmm. the spleen, mm -hmm. the pancreas, the adrenal glands, the males, the, the prostate, the testes, the woman, the uterus, and the, and the um, ovaries, those are the seven mm -hmm. major endocrine glands in the body are what is called ductless glands, which produces mm -hmm. hormones. Well, mm -hmm. there's light so which that is superimposed over those particular um, endocrine glands, uh, which is mm -hmm. what we call within the chemistry field, Roy G. Ben, uh, which is the mm -hmm. color red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, uh, which mm -hmm. is coming from the base chakra, which is red, navel, mm -hmm. orange, olaplex is yellow, heart, green, throat, mm -hmm. sky blue, third eye, indigo, crown, violet, mm -hmm. white, or mm -hmm. gold. Um, mm -hmm. So, hence, you have the, the rainbow within yourself. This is actually what is meant that Noah um, received the rainbow as the covenant from God. It's talking about the chakra system. All right? Mm -hmm. Well, from the chakra system, um, you know, comes forth what is the of your auric field. All right? Um, and your auric field, um, your lower auric field is about two inches above the physical body, which they really call that your ethereal or your etheric body, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it expands out more, it expands out to about another foot and a half out, which is your health aura. Then from that mm -hmm. to three feet outside of you is your outer aura. So you have an outer mm -hmm. aura, a health aura, and an inner aura. And those mm -hmm. three looks like somewhat of a shell or an egg, um, as we would say, because it's like an overshape over your physical body. Um, mm -hmm. There's certain techniques that you can do in order to make it expand five feet outside of you in diameter, and that is called the 18th breath, 24th breath, and 28th breath, um, what's called Makaba technique. And the word Makaba means mm -hmm. um, and chariot in the Hebrew, um, which that mm -hmm. you find that Elijah was taken up on the flame and chariot. Um, to be with mm. God, and that is talking about the macabre, you know. So the whole still is that um, as it is able to change into various geometrical shapes through know, particular breathing, uh, breathing um, exercises in which that taps to the different sense of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So that's the science mm -hmm. of your auric still is light. Um, and light mm -hmm. is, is in the physical body. Um, being generated by way of the water, which you are seventy five percent water. Um, mm -hmm. Your brain is oh, your, uh, water. Your your mm -hmm. phone sounds just a little bit muffled. I mean, I want people to hear this. All right, can you yeah. hear me now? Much better. It's loud and clear. All right. Okay. Um, um, what what part? You know. Can you hear me now? Is that the only? Yes, much clear. much better. Much better. clear. Much All right. Better. Um, yeah. what, what part did y'all bring you here? Uh, the, well, I would go back when you started talking about aura as the light field. All right. So the aura is actually light being emitted and generated by way of, um, which is also heat. Um, mm -hmm. You have your solar plexus particularly, in which that is um, your nerve plexus, in which mm -hmm. that sits um, like in the center of your torso. And then that is called the solar plexus. The word solar means sun. So there's heat in which that is generated by the neurons in which that is being activated within um, that area. So hence heat is produced in which that regulates your temperature of your body to 98.6 degrees. Um, that heat, um, you know, in mixture with the water, which your body is 75% water, produces steam. And your aura, mm. um, it actually that um, that steam in which that is being released on that light, in which that is being released mm -hmm. from your physical body. Let me just put it that way. That's the most simplest way I can um, get to understand that. Yeah. To, to break that down. Okay, now, like, um, so 
even the regular human has experienced this before, where, where you know, you could be sitting down with your back facing whatever, and you could feel when somebody walks in the room. Or right. sometimes you could walk in a room and feel somebody was talking about your ass, or you can right. feel right. If, there, if, if, they, if there's some grief in the room. It, is that, mm-hmm. like, when I'm walking in the room, am, am I picking up on that individual's or those individual's auras when, I, when that phenomenon right. happens? Right. right. We go back and watch the movie um, Fall of War with um, Wesley Snipes, the first one. Um, uh-huh. He learned to he learned to practice what is called psych chemistry. He was able to walk uh-huh. into the room and know, based on the astral impressions in which that was left in the room, he was able right. to detail mm-hmm. exactly what took place in that room. Um, right. That's what all of us we all have um, an etheric or astral um, impression in which that we leave when we touch an item mm-hmm. or when we walk into a room or or whatever the case is, there's a part of us in which mm-hmm. that is last. And anyone mm-hmm. who practices the science of psych chemistry can actually pick up on those particular frequencies at any given time. Um, the best is would be within um, an hour or two um, mm-hmm. is the best impression that you will receive. After that, mm-hmm. of course, the energy you know, already begin to start dissipating and dissolving. Um, but if a person can get it within the first hour or two, then they can actually pick up um, the energies from the individual and be on point about who was in that particular room and actually what took place. Ah, uh, okay, got you. Based upon them leaving an act and uh, astral uh, signature. Right, your astral uh-huh. signature. Okay. 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 Interesting. Can I also know, notice you're one of the best at breaking down the uh, certain hidden powers in the body. You and I had a conversation um, because each time I hear you talk about it, it brought to mind that TV show from the 80s, um, uh, Greatest American Hero, where in the story um, he got this super suit from right. from wherever the fuck wherever, but um, he didn't know how to work. He lost the instruction book and didn't know how to work it. So each time I hear you lecture, it always that always comes to mind because of the way you speak of the body. Like and and I haven't seen you left any part of it out yet. That is just basically super suit. That through time we have lost the instructions on how to basically use it, but. Tech, but it's not really lost because it's in our it's in our subconscious minds basically, and it's clear we can tap into it because you have been explaining this shit for quite a long time. So I just would like you to share some of the things in the part of parts of the body that we can activate, and or is there a system that we can tap into? Perhaps you teach or a book that we can tap into that kind of explains these different parts of the body. In, in, in how uh, we can activate it for spiritual uh, advancement. Well, we have many books. You know, the Bible is mm-hmm. um, actually a summary of some of that information, the Quran, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. the Havadita, the Shah, the, um, well, the five books of the uh, the uh, last I mean, you know, the Niggas can't decode that shit on the levels. Yeah, I, I know, I know, but I still <laughs> that, have to that, tell them that, that you have been, Yeah, you, 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 right. you are a master of, of decoding that shit, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. But all these other <laughs> books have components of um, of what is actually going on. The Bible itself, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. if you can get past the story about white Jesus, you know, uh, you start mm-hmm. to realize what white is actually saying I'm only saying white Jesus because that's how everybody thinks that's, that's how everybody thinks it. Right. You know, mm-hmm. like, even though the mm-hmm. book of Revelation says that the nigga had hair like lamb's wool and feet of burnt bronze mm-hmm. and right. furnace, um and the voice of many waters right. and red eyes. Okay? Mm-hmm. Eyes like that's a nigga if ever there was a nigga. If ever there was a Jesus, he would be a nigga. Hey, 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 <laughs> if he did it, he would be a nigga. Go, like, all you got to do is go watch Good Times 
<laughs> right. <laughs> episode one. See, Michael see, put Black like, Jesus was, on the wall and everything changed. Black Jesus was making miracles happen. <laughs> shit, James was hitting the numbers, <laughs> all sorts of shit. Thank you, Black <laughs> Jesus. And I don't even give a fuck if it was Ned the Wino. I don't give a fuck if it was Ned the Wino, nigga. Thank you, exactly. Black Jesus. Black Jesus is exactly. doing plenty of shit, you know what I'm saying? Plenty of good shit. Yeah, it is shit. <laughs> Thank you, Black Jesus. So now you said exactly. all of these, basically these holy books that we've come to know and, and that, you know, they are filled with symbology. You have to be somebody to be able to read it and understand it. So so that's why right. I said in the beginning that, you know, Brother Leem is one of those who has come back to to show us some of our old ancient forms of thinking, understanding, because everybody is not going to get that. You know what I'm saying? Not easy, and, but, and, you know, you dedicated a big portion of your life at this work. You know what I mean? Because, shit, Aleem told me, some like, you know, well, yeah, back when I used to do this shit in 84, I'm like, damn, nigga, like, wait a minute, how old are you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In 84? Nigga, I had a pair of... But my whole shit was trying to find a stonewash suit, you know what I'm saying, high-top Adidas. <laughs> and, like, and the lean was like, well, when I was decoding the Koran in 84, and when I was studying this in 87, I'm like, shit, in 87, nigga, I was trying to get rap videos, you know what I'm saying? Somebody emailed me the other day, yo, I seen you in Super Level C's video, nigga, I lost it. <laughs> I said, yeah, you know, I was looking real young. And they used to call me old, you know what I'm saying? They said, damn, I was eight years old when this shit came out. I was like, I was already grown. And at least shit, 84, nigga, I was studying this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, God damn, nigga. So you've been, you dedicated, uh, we need to understand that. You're not a newfangled internet phenomenon. You know what I'm saying? Before this shit was even shit that niggas stood around and even wanted to fuck with, you was clearly deep in this shit. So niggas ain't gonna read the Quran and be like, "Oh shit, they talk about my arms." <laughs> niggas gonna read the cow and think they talk about a motherfucking cow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Wow, I didn't know the cow was that divine. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, so they're not going. Oh, they talk about half You know what I'm saying? So we gotta go slow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We gotta go right, slow. Right, right, right. Because you're very, you know, you gotta remember, you very advanced, bro. And you know, well, so, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna name some. I'm gonna name some books in this that will help them, you know, uh, reach okay. those levels a lot quicker than they have for me because um, we didn't have the internet. You know, I had to read hundreds right. and thousands of books, magazine articles, and right. pamphlets, and you know, lectures, mm-hmm. watch lectures, and, um, you mm-hmm. know, and practice. You know, so mm-hmm. um, the internet now, you know, got this whole thing, you know, um, a whole lot easier for you. So what might have took right. you 20 years, y'all can learn in two. But the whole mm. thing is this, is that um, you never say that you think you know everything. Every morning you wake up with the idea and the concept that you know nothing so that your cup can be right. filled. Right. You know, so you, right. um, that's, you that's how you eliminate right. the people on a daily basis. The same is simply upon waking it, you know nothing. And you right. allow it for right. the consciousness of God to put you in particular positions because God is nothing more than your higher self. So you wait for you. You to put, you know, the physical you to get in tune with the higher self of you, all right, which is right. God of Excellent. you. I'm all glad right. you so, said that. Um, that's what you're really, you know, waiting for on a daily basis, you know. And, um, right. You know, and yeah, so when thing, you read, like, go ahead, Doc. Oh, no, I just wanted to in- interject before we got off the subject. One person said, oh, yeah. Panic, you're contradicting yourself. I said, nigga, that's a compliment. You know what I mean? I want to know, <laughs> I want to be able to talk some shit that's different. <laughs> Tomorrow, you know, I did yesterday. That means I learned some shit. You know what I'm saying? I think I'll be going to the grave talking that same shit. You know what I'm saying? I said that shit in 1929, nigga, and I mean it today, goddammit. That, that ain't going to You know what I'm saying? No, I hope that's a fucking compliment. You know what I'm saying? I used to say that. Right. I used to say this. That means I went somewhere. So, you, yes, that's exactly. one of the first things you to learn. So I'm so glad you said that. That you 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 come to terms with that you don't know shit. You know what I'm saying? You never yeah. walk around this motherfucker talking about you know Hell it all no. and you're so wise never. and you're a master never. teacher no, no and way. all that kind of shit. Fuck all of that. I don't even want to be none of that shit. I always want to sit in the seat of mmm mmm. Thank you very much. That's deep. You know what I mean? 
because that right. means you put yourself in a position, as Aleem said, that you to empty your cup. And they tell you all that shit. They show you all that shit in the Matrix. First, you must earn, learn this, and 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 and, and uh, uh, how come your eyes never work? Because you never use them, and all of these are reference to that exact point. You know what I'm saying? You you um. Stop thinking that you know or seeing what you've seen. They're saying you never really used them. You're not doing that. That's not air you're breathing. You get what I'm saying? Stop acting like you know what the fuck you know. Because everybody on Facebook talking about they know what they know. The motherfucking ghouls of the status messages, I'm saying y'all missing a very subtle point. And it's not even what you say in your status message. It's the mere fact that you feel so compelled to keep saying this shit. Which is saying that you don't have time empty cup to learn anything new. You're too busy trying to prove what you think you know. I'm glad you said that. That's one of the most important things anybody starting out should understand. That's, and, and in fact, that is one of the first things I've heard when I got into the conscious community when I started seeing black folks' faces. Don't ever, ever walk around here acting like you know something. When, you know what I mean? That you may not. So now that that rant's over, <laughs> um, I think we lost the chat room. Did y'all lose the chat room, Elaine? Uh, probably so. It's ten o'clock, so uh, no, so no they might come off. Them. But yeah, they usually keep the chat room up. Like, I don't understand how everybody got lost, but let me see. <laughs> yeah, but but it's still on the air, so we're still recording, so we're gonna keep going. Right. Yeah, we're still unless I don't know, unless I hit unless I hit some shit. But um, yeah, let me let me let me give us some books. Um, the Medical oh, yeah. Bible okay. Dictionary by Charles Fillmore. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, that's one of the books in which that helped. Um, the esoterically interp- um, the four Gospels esoterically interpreted by John P. Scott. Mm-hmm. Um, the, um, the Apocalypse. Um, uh-huh. by. Uh, what's, his, what's his name? Uh, actually, was uh, Philotus. T h y l o t u s. Philotus. Mm-hmm. Um, another good one is Hidden Wisdom of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Right, I actually got those from Bobby back in ninety what ninety five. Mm. And okay. So let me make, if we get cut off, let me make this. We will be back next week with part two, and it's going to be more questions and answers than we answer, uh, uh, question and brother Aline. We have a lot to deal with. We have to, we have a lot to deal with Jesus uh, and his symbology, because uh, Aline uncovers some things there that I definitely want to talk about. I want to talk about some Bible stories, Noah, Moses, uh, Abraham and Sarah, uh, Joshua blowing his horn, um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff you talked about uh, with the straw man. So we have we have some qu- questions in the ground to cover if we get cut off. We're going to see how far we can get today. Um, but and I'm sure more things will come out of it. But we basically want to cover that. So we'll be back next week, Thursday, eight o'clock. Join us. Bring your asses. All right. So uh, so we started talking about. Um, the symbology in different parts of the body. Um, can you uh, name some parts of the body uh, that have both, you know, we, we understand it for its physical meaning, but name some parts of the body that um, uh, some symbologies and some of those books that you named that, that people will get an aha moment just to see that it's more than just your lungs or just your heart or just your ribs or whatever. Right, right. Well, um, we know the story of Moses, as they say, that he split the Red Sea. And okay. I always found that story interesting. And when I came to the conclusion of, you know, the physical Bible dictionary by Charles um, Fillmore, and you start mm-hmm. seeing that Moses is an aspect of consciousness, but mm-hmm. it actually is an aspect of the heart physically, then you start to realize, mm-hmm. oh, the point in you know, the two in control motion of those four chambers in the heart is what produces the split in the Red Sea, which is your bloodstream. 
Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. once I realized that, okay, well, understand that people was focusing on a story from 4,000 years ago, Moses split the Red Sea. That's beautiful. But mm-hmm. when they realized that the red, red, you know, the real Red Sea is talking about their own bloodstream and their heart, then they take that to a whole other perspective. They won't see mm-hmm. it as just a story from 4,000 years ago. They'll see it as something in which that is related to them here and now, in which that mm-hmm. they, um, you know, which happens to them on a regular basis. Okay, got you. Uh, so now, okay, so, so, so the name Moses would have to have a symbolic meaning as well. Right. Um, within Hebrew, the word Moses means to draw forth. So what does the mm-hmm. heart do? The heart draws the um, the blood uh, through the particular, um, you know, chambers, you know, arteries. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in order to, you know, produce that 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 to and fro motion. So, you know, the name Moses itself means the draw forth or the draw from the waters. So water mm-hmm. is talking about the waters of life, which is your bloodstream, the plasma. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, no coincidence that saline solution is identical to your plasma. Your blood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. as a matter of fact, that's a, at one time Instead of using that, blood, they that, use the new solution for blood transfusion. That's salt water, basically, right? That's salt water, exactly. Oh, okay, exactly. so that's where you would get the, the the Red Sea. Right, Red Sea. Okay. Oh, all right. So why would they put this symbology there? We we know why it would be corrupted, but... Right, um, well, well we know that Moses' story... Is, uh, is a Sumerian right. story, right, if I'm correct? Mm-hmm. So, right, what right. would you say so, the Sumerians were trying to say? Mm-hmm. But when now you look at the, what the Bible, mm-hmm. when you look at the Bible, you're looking at a, a summary of information in which that was taught, um, mm-hmm. which actually is gathered from off the walls of ancient Smith. This is why we know mm-hmm. that Moses, you know, he was the Prince of Egypt. Moses was called mm-hmm. the Prince of Egypt. He spent, um, he was in Egypt for 40 years. Um, first and then 40 more years later on, you know, um, you know, so this whole thing, you know, is showing, you know, like the formation of us within the mm-hmm. womb. The 40 years is nothing more than actually the 40 weeks within the woman's womb of the human mm-hmm. body being formed. And mm-hmm. the first organ, um, the first organ in which that is formed within the body is the heart. In the brain, that symbolizes consciousness. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. Um, when they speak of Moses, they speak of Moses in that context, not as an actual mm-hmm. um, man by himself or as the only man, but as humanity as a whole. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and those flaws in which that humanity has, you know, dealing with moral, mm-hmm. you know, moral issues, um, you know, uh, murder. You know, as Moses is going to be murdered to um, Egyptians, you know, um, mm-hmm. or, and because of that, he wasn't able to see, you know, go into, you know, he was in the wilderness, the de- you know, the wilderness or the desert, mm-hmm. you know, for 40 mm-hmm. years, before the night, but he was never able to go into um, the land of Canaan, you know, mm-hmm. or Israel. You know, he was able to go to the top of the mountain and see and look down, but there he died. Mm, right. Um, okay. All that is right. All that is symbolism. You know, um, talking about the fact of, uh, like you said earlier, about the heart and its attachments. Mm, okay. You know, in other words, if you okay. allow for you, you know, for your heart to be bogged down by things in which that you have done in life, whether it's murder, mm. whether it's, um, you know, uh, oh fornication or whatever the case is, if you allow for your heart to be, um, you know, held down like that, then you won't make it, you know, no. into what we call this, 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 no, so this is actually interesting. Um, yeah. I hate to cut you off because before this loses my mind, Moses couldn't go into uh, the, the promised land, which you could, like right. you pointed out, could be as the, uh, as the uh, upper chakras. Him being a heart right. chakra, but the reason right. was, if you remember, the reason was he tapped the rock and water came out, and he said, "Watch what right. I did," as opposed to "Watch what God did." 
which is another way of saying that was his ego. So it's like once you bring that ego into the heart chakra, you can't get into the promised land. Exactly. Which is interesting. Now, when you see it as the heart chakra, you see a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You see a whole different thing. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, that's that's, 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 that's mm-hmm, And mm-hmm. people can verify what I'm talking about by going to the book Hidden Wisdom of the Bible by Matthew right. Fox. And um they can mm-hmm. check that book out and um see what I'm talking about. Also uh, or Christ Consciousness, um, there's another book called I think it's called Christ Consciousness. I can't remember the author right now. But I think mm-hmm. Matthew Fox also um dealt with that book too. So, mm-hmm. so check these books out and you'll start seeing a, a higher revelation of what is actually taking place in the way you read these stories as compared to the way in which that you've been trained to look at it. You know, you know, mm-hmm. especially my Jehovah Witness friend. Right. Oh yeah. Now okay, so since we're on Moses and I know we talked about this, you might as well just go to Noah. So um, can you, for us, decode what this Noah story is all about? Yeah. When we're talking about Noah, um, within the Greek, you find the name Noah to mean nos, which means mind. Mm-hmm. Right? So once again, it's an aspect of consciousness, just like Moses was, so was um, Noah. And, of course, it rained 40 days or 40 nights. And of course, okay. you know, uh, we find once again, just like Moses was in the in the wood, you know, was in the wilderness for forty years, and before that forty years, you know, um, he was the prince of Egypt. So for forty mm-hmm. years he was the prince of Egypt, and for another forty years he was in the wilderness. So okay, at forty, at 40 Jesus also, been, you know, forty days, you know, being tempted by the devil, forty days and forty nights. You know, so that number forty uh-huh. always symbolizes um, spiritual maturity. As well mm-hmm. as also the firm foundation, you know, dealing with four being the four elements of air, water, and fire combined to form ether, which is actually zero. Mm-hmm. So we understand mm-hmm. that that's symbolic, but you also have the fact that 40 happens to be, once again, the formation of the human body in the world of the world, which is 40 mm-hmm. weeks. 40, 40 weeks, we are there being formed in the waters of life, which is the amniotic fluid, just like mm-hmm. Moses was drawn forth from the water, right. which is, i.e., also a form of the sperm being encased in semen, which is the uh-huh. water of life. Also, um, that shows the formation of that sperm um, and the egg as it combines and goes through mitosis in the waters of life. Um, mm-hmm. Noah symbolizes being in that ark. That arc is actually mm. the the, um, the roundness of that stomach. If you lay a woman mm. down, the only thing you can see is the is the top rounding portion in which that the baby is in, which that's actually the arc itself. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's what is symbolic to Noah. It's no coincidence that um, it says Adam is laid from the dust of the ground, hence symbolic to the earth, which would be the base chakra. Noah is, um, is forty days and forty nights on the rain, the water. Hence, it would be symbolic to your navel chakra. And the word navy is derived from the word navel. And the word navy mm-hmm. is what? Warfare. So, oh. of course, it's at your belly button. is called navy or navel. Um, so, mm-hmm. hence, mm-hmm. your umbilical cord is attached to the mother. Also, for those 40 days and for those 40 weeks, in which that you're receiving all your nutrients, the vitamins, minerals, your conscious thinking, you're talking to the child, so forth, so on, comes by way of that particular um, mm-hmm. anchor. Mm-hmm. You know, just like on the ark, you have an anchor. You had to have some type of mowing um, um, apparatus in which that stopped the boat whenever mm-hmm. um, it was to come to shore. You know, it's the same mm-hmm. thing with the water breaking. Um, now the child comes to shore. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now right. it's raining on now, now here it is. Now it's raining in the forty weeks, or the forty days, or forty nights. Um, mm-hmm. The rain is now pouring down, and that's the water breaking as the child is now coming to shore. Mm. You know, hence a, a boat mm-hmm. is also called. Uh, what a boat is also being birthed. 
moral story, just like Aesop's story, you find that mm-hmm. um, David fell in love with Bathsheba, and he wanted Bathsheba mm-hmm. so badly mm-hmm. that he would actually put her husband on the front line to dead him off so that he can get with her. Those, mm-hmm. That's a matter of the heart, once again. Oh, no. mm-hmm. But it still, as it showed you, is something negative um, aspect of the heart in which that would keep you from being um, in the highest arena. And how mm-hmm. you know that is because it tells you in the Bible that David, because of that action that he did or because of that act he did by killing um, Bathsheba's husband on the front, putting him on the front line and killing him off where he can get her, um, he was not able to build the temple of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Solomon, mm-hmm. his son had to, you know, build the temple of God. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. David was okay. not allowed to. So that's the same way, just like Moses wasn't able to go to um, oh, the promise. Right. 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 But Neither he, was, he, was, he was at the heart. He was at right. the, right. the right. heart chakra in the temple. Right. The temple was technically above the heart chakra. So he was the gateway, yep, so yep. he went to his son, which represents the next chakra. Wow. Interesting. Exactly. Have you ever did the exactly. decoding on Samson and Delilah? That's the uh, cutting oh, off the hair guy. Right, of yeah, course. What, what's the um, physical? What is the right, metaphysical? Well, symbolizes the sun. Delilah symbolizes the moon. It's the aspect mm-hmm. of the fight between the sun and the moon or day and night. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Samson has seven locks of hair, hence about to the seven rays of the sun or the seven chakras. Right. Hence, mm. he gathered his strength. Um, his strength um, came by way of the sun. Hence, the same thing with Superman and Sazam, mm. you know, mm. um, you know, when you read about them in the cartoons or in the comic mm. books, you know, um, oh, you know, you know Superman is... Right. Huh? Oh, and I was saying, I guess uh, it sounds like the origin of Hercules as well. It's the same story, right? Hercules. The same story. Same, same, same story. Right, that's the Grecian uh-huh. version of Samson. Right, Samson, Samson is the biblical. Okay. Right, Samson is the biblical uh-huh. story, and and um, you know, and and what does you know what? what, what it, it, that's a good thing because when you talk about Sazam, you know. Mm-hmm. Listen to the word Sazam. Sazam is right. the same as Samson. <laughs> mm. Right. Samson. Right. Sazam. Right. Right. Sam, right. <laughs> wow. The only thing they did was reverse <laughs> Sam and Son and reverse it. You got Samson. Right. Like some Sam. Right. Some Sam, which is right. Shazam. Damn. Right. right. Exactly. So. And these niggas never so ended. So <laughs> mm hmm. So they show you all of this. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so Delilah, we know. Um, she, of course, she cuts the um, the seven locks of Samson, cut his hair, hence cutting his strength, and mm-hmm. she sells him out. You know, to the Philistine. Um, his hair begins to grow back. He begins to get his strength back. Mm-hmm. This is all talking mm-hmm. about the battle between night and day. Which is the same thing, which is within the oh, okay. So basically, like that sunset, then as his hair grows back, the sun rises. Right, Heru and Set. Right, Heru, that's the same thing as the battle between Heru and Set. You know, mm, so yeah. it now goes into um, that story of Samson and Delilah, you know, um, right. between and the sun and the moon. Right. right, 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 right. So that's, that's, mm. the, that's the science behind them and what is going on with them. Mm, okay. All right, let me ask about uh, let's let's get to Mighty Whitey, <laughs> Jesus Christ Almighty. Right. Um, you know, we, we you know people have talked about the basic symbols, but um, from your from your study, talk about some of the symbols in Jesus Christ. Right. Well, when you look at um, you know Jesus, you mm-hmm. know that Christ wasn't his last name. You know, you know, Christians right. might think so, you know, and, you know, many others might think so, too. But right. the name Jesus, of course, you know, the J didn't come into existence in the 15th century, so his name actually was um, um, Yitzhu or Yasu or Yahshua uh, within the Aramaic, mm-hmm. all right? So, um, or Hebrew, um, you know, who 
Yahushua or Yahshua. All right, so we find that that name means salvation or oh, he who saves. Now, mm-hmm. when you take and find where the word shu originated from, you go back to ancient Kemet, you find that shu was the personification of air. And as mm-hmm. a personification of air, um, it symbolized the breath of life. All right, so mm-hmm. Yahshua um, is the new deity of the New Testament. And the only thing they did was put Shu in between the Old Testament deity, which was Yahweh or Yahweh. Um, mm. You would have Yahweh, all right, or Yahweh and mm-hmm. in, the, in the Old Testament, but then they put Shu in between Yah and the way, and hence you get Yahshua um, in the New mm. Testament. So hence, this mm. is how Jesus becomes the Son of God or becomes God. Uh, because oh. they're they showing you that in the Old Testament, you only heard about Yahweh. By the New Testament, you hear about Yahshua. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. So it's telling mm-hmm. you, now, in the Old Testament, Yah symbolizes the higher self. Yah symbolizes the lower self. In the story oh. of ancient Testament, you had something in which that came along, which was Shu, that divided new yeah. and Yeah, right. And Before right. Shu came yeah. from the scene, of Newt and Geb. That's the first thing you see, Newt and Geb. Right. That's the Old Testament symbology of Yahweh. All right? Symbolic mm. to the higher self and the lower self. And you see, mm. the lower self symbolizes the penis being erected, hence symbolic to the lower self. The higher self, you see right. the stars embedded inside of the body, hence symbolic to the fact of now collecting enough stardust in order to understand mm. who you actually are, hence the higher self. Mm. The next and thing even you see is now... Uh-huh. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. Right. The next thing you see now is Shu in between mm-hmm. Newt and Geb. So now mm-hmm. you have the New Testament deity of Yahshua going into mm-hmm. the mix now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even, and, and, what's crazy, and what's crazy, if you put uh-huh. it, match that with the chakra system, you have the low and the upper, as you pointed out. But the heart chakra right. is represented as air, in the middle, which is in the middle, right. which is... Which is which is separate, you know, what separates that same air, which is shoe. Again, that's, that's right. interesting how this exactly. all corresponds. Interesting. Exactly. Uh, uh, see, I was going to mm-hmm. just keep going. You were use brain this down. It's real interesting. So you're saying the Yah, yeah. Shua, in the next testament, so him is air. Let me ask you about this, right. because there's also, there's also Joshua. And remember, right. Joshua is the dude that blew his horn. I, when um, when you right. tell me, I was thinking about this shit later. He's the dude with the wall connected to the came tumbling down. Exactly. And the wind, it came tumbling down. So I guess mm-hmm. I'm about to ask, do you have symbolism for the walls of Jericho? Because then he blow it seven times and all this shit like that. Right. Of course, the seven times symbolizes the activation of the seven chakras. The same thing that you see within Muslims when they go around the Kaaba, they go around the what? Seven times. Mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. on the last right. one, it kisses the black stone called the Kaaba. Well, it's the mm-hmm. same thing with um, the same thing with the story of Joshua. It went around the walls of Jericho seven times, symbolic to the activation and the opening of those walls, which is nothing but wills, those seven mm-hmm. wills. And the mm-hmm. wall was talking about how the breath of life is actually utilized in order to, to, to activate and open up those particular chakras. Mm-hmm. That's what mm-hmm. that story was about. How you know? Because the word Joshua is nothing more than an English transliteration of the, uh, of the word Yahshua. Yahshua, mm-hmm. right? Right. Yeah. Because it's Joshua. It's basically Joshua. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Wow. Interesting. So, um. It, right. And it's no coincidence that we say, uh, nigga, you Joshua. Right. Right. Uh, right. Wow. Right. Wow. right. Wow. You Joshua. Right. Stop Joshua me. Right. Yeah. Wow. And basically, that's basically stop blowing smoke up my ass. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. exactly. Exactly. All right. So now, um, how did, why did the word Christ, as you pointed out, wasn't his last name, how did those two come together to be known as Jesus right. Christ? Yeah. What does Christ mean and why Why are they now married to each other? Shoe, shoe of the name was called Christ. Mm-hmm. Shu is actually a form of Heru. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. his other name is called Kares. And the word from Kares mm-hmm. came forth Christos, which means to be anointed, in which that 
you know, became in it, you know, from Latin into the English transliteration, Christ. Is that so like, like Hopper? The of that is called Cress. And if you go and that, look in um, the book. Is that, the, um, is that crash connected to Hoppocrats? Yeah, Hoppocrats, right. Crash. Which is a is form it, of Heru. That's, that's actually the form of form of Heru. And you said a form of Heru, form of Heru. That's what made me think. Is that right. referring to the same Kratz of Christ? Right, that's the Christ. And so okay. in, the, in, in ancient times, the anointing would take place with the fat of the crocodile fat. All right, but we understand is that that fat actually is nothing more than DNA being excreted from the pineal gland. Uh, that, is the, okay. that is the fat. That is the fat of Sebek. This is why oftentimes you mm. see Heru standing on top of Sebek, which is the crocodile deity, symbolic to mm. the Kundalini, the power. Mm-hmm. Okay. But where he gets, okay. or where he gets his power from, the soul, the awakened soul, gets his activation by way of the activated. Kundalini, which is the reptilian force within each and every one of us. Now, let me ask you this, Aleem, um, because, mm-hmm. and I know the picture, because you get very few pictures of Harper Cross. The famous one is right. that Stella where he's standing on so back. He has two or four snakes in his hands. But what stands right. out the most, and I wonder if there's any symbology in this that you've come across, um, that he doesn't look scared. He looks extremely calm. And almost so calm that that uh, the Camites who were uh, uh, making carving uh, this was almost making this point. So, have you noticed any symbology with his calmness or any other symbology about his demeanor that that makes a statement to you? Yeah, definitely. Um, you can see that's that's mm-hmm. when he have his finger up to his lip, right? Yeah, yeah, when he's thumb sucking his thumb. Right, sucking his thumb. Right, exactly. So, of course, that symbolizes mm-hmm. nurturing. So it's mm-hmm. talking about this force nurtures you in the process. Mm-hmm. You know, as vicious mm-hmm. and deadly as it is, it can also nurture you in the same process if you mm-hmm. know how to do mm-hmm. it properly. Oh, you know? the Kundalini so, energy. Right. That, right. Fucking, that makes sense because motherfuckers deal with Kundalini, some motherfuckers get fucked up, and some motherfuckers get harnessed it right. Mm-hmm. right. So, boom, they're showing you, they're showing you him harnessed and right, that's why he has a look of no fear. Because a lot exactly. of motherfuckers are scared of it because they don't understand it. Mm-hmm. Well, if I raise Kundalini, is that going to happen? Is that going to happen? Is I'm going to change? Yep. And is that uh, makes fucking clear sense. I'm sorry to interrupt, but this is fucking interesting to me. I'm no, sorry, no, 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 no. That's, that's, that's cool. Uh, I have a question. So maybe we can get it all out for the people. Yeah, yeah I, you saying, but it's, it's interesting like, like, nigga, if y'all ain't paying attention, this is some profound shit. I can't wait to part two as well. <laughs> Next week, eight o'clock, we're gonna keep going. Oh yeah, some profound shit. So now, so, so you're saying that, uh, so basically, him raising the Kundalini, right? Right. Mhm. Mhm. That's, okay. that's exactly what that is. Mhm. Okay. That particular high glyphic letter, right? That's an excellent okay. scene of um. Of um of Heru, which is like I said, is a form of Shu. Um, mm-hmm. That's no coincidence that um, um, Shu also, well, Shu Heru or Heru Shu, um, um, also had another name by the name of um, Isu. Now, mm-hmm. when you go to the Holy Quran, Jesus' name is Isa. Now here it is, mm-hmm. Isu, um, within ancient Kemetic, and here it is within Arabic, Isa. And they tell you mm. his name is, and that means Jesus within Arabic language. But yet, that mm. name is from Isu, which is the name of Heru. Mm. So the Quran mm. was telling you who Jesus actually was and where right. he went back to, you know, as far as um, um, the ancient you know, Egyptian connection. This mm. is the reason why that Muslims... Was- um, yeah, mm-hmm. this is why the Muslims don't understand what they really have because it actually is t- telling them to go back to ancient Egypt, but they get caught up into mm-hmm. the worship of Muhammad and become Muhammadans. Mm-hmm. Right, they worship mm-hmm. Muhammad. You know, mm-hmm. so what the thing is, is you know, la ilaha illallah wa tuhu asliqalahu a Muhammad or Rasulullah. They, they, you know, they, mm-hmm. they want to talk about Muhammad or Rasulullah. Muhammad is, you know, is the prophet. You know, and, and they want to get caught up in Muhammad. Mm. You know, but the whole thing, even 
even any Muslim would tell you that um, the Quran speaks about Jesus 25 times in there, and that's more than any other person that is spoken of in the Quran. And then it says that, mm. and even though they want to say that Jesus is not a prophet, they forget to read the other section where it says Jesus is the Messiah. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, okay. Mm. You know, and so, so that takes you back to Misha, um, and the word mm -hmm. Misha, or Mashia, um, within the Hebrew, um, also means anointed. But that takes you back to the word Misu within the ancient Kemetic teachings, in which that is a form of a saw, which means the mummified body, which is Kuras. Once again, mm. you know, mm. so the Dang. mummified body of Osiris is called like the pain right. wrapped around the soul, or the soul is embedded inside. Um, that's that's mm. the swallowing the clothing as Jesus was um, as Jesus was in as a babe, and then in the sepulchre, um, as he um, supposedly passed, he was also uh, wrapped in white linen. All of that is symbolic to mm. the pineal gland. Um, mm. Jesus is symbolic mm. to the soul um, um, in that aspect, you know, mm. which is tied, i.e., mm. to the physical body itself. This is why um, within the Yoruba, Dang. you have Ishu, Ishu and Legba. Yeah. The word That's what I was going to ask, because the, the name Ishu, Ishu came out. Mm. The Lord of the Crossroads. The Lord of the Crossroads is talking about your physical body. If you um mm. if you stand um with your feet together and your hands and your arms out at your um at your side up, um mm -hmm. it forms a cross. That's mm. issue and leg bob. You know, issue mm. and so it's no coincidence that you find out that shoe, which is the breath, composes um your physical body. Through your insulation and mm. exhalation of the breath is what keeps your physical composition together. Without it, you decompose. Mm. So, you so know, that, and this now, is why Ishu Alekba is known as the trickster because if you follow the flesh, you get tricked into um, um, all types of things. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm. Having to get yourself up out of it. Mm. Mm. Okay, this is starting to make a lot of sense. Now, let me. Um, this is this is starting to make a lot of sense. So now, um, damn, there was something I was just going to ask. Like uh, when you were just talking about Ishu, and before you called him the trickster, the separation. Um, right. Uh, okay. Uh, the 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 because uh, okay, the breath separates basically your lower and higher self. Right. So if I it regulates, it, 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 it takes me out of my animal self and brings me into my higher self. Something you were saying that right. that makes that that's that 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 all four mm -hmm. symbolically, and then the head symbolizes being above the animal nature, just like Jesus on the um on the donkey or the jackass, you know, coming through the um gates of um of Jerusalem, you know, mm -hmm. symbolically, you know, um or Heru symbolizes oh, okay. um you know the head of a man, but then at the same time, set symbol was a donkey or a jackass. Right, the or same a jackass. concept. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Right, goes back over and so, over again. So we, with we, we, now, there's a rare picture, and actually, uh, whose book is it? It's Egyptian Deities from A to Z. I think that's the name of it. Um, I can't remember. Uh, I think it's, I can't remember the author. But in it, he has the picture, and he also has a story called A Tale of Two Brothers. And it's a rare mythology where it shows Horace and Set as brothers. Um Right. And, you know, it still talks about their mythology, but and then there's also this rare picture where Horace and Set are back-to-back -back and, right. and connected, connected. And that's where you get this phrase in the Bible, devil get behind me, I've, I heard people say. I've right. heard get Bobby behind her. me. Right. Get devil behind me. Behind me. Right. Now, get behind me. So there are two brothers in there together. So, so what, when I keep seeing now, based upon what, you, what, what, what I'm hearing from you is, all of these polarities that are together, the breath is the thing that separates them. So the breathing right. techniques that you're talking about, them. I, right. uh, the or, breath or, is what merges them, them or well. either separates them. Right, that's the mediator. Okay, or, 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 or balances, or, or maybe the better word is balance. Or uh, instead of separate, the better word is balance, I guess. Right. Or, 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 or at least put them in their proper perspective. Because you're still going right. to always need something to, while you're here on Earth, you're still going to need your so-called animal self. You're going to have to shop, right. drive, and do all the other shit. Exactly. But, but 
it's your emotion, like, it, it's not the center of your emotion. That's the difference. You know what I'm saying? If I'm in right. Walmart, I'm going to do Walmart shit, but, but, but that doesn't <laughs> encompass my life. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. I'm not going to be like, guess what the fuck happened at Walmart today? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't think that's going to go down. Like, you know, where, let me call my mama and tell her what happened at Walmart. So it exactly. seems like when you hear that Christ energy, it, it keeps coming when, as you correlate it to shoe in the breath. It seems like that Christ energy comes down to a lot of breathing technique to kind of balance out the lower and the upper, and they always and you kind of see a lot of symbology where they show you together, starting with the creation story of Gev and uh, Newt together, and Shu coming in between them to kind of separate it. You get me saying? Right. You kind of hit. You kind of see this theme going over and over again. Exactly. Um, the theme is there. Exactly. Okay, it seems to be going over and over again. Now, um, we started to talk about. I don't think we got all into. We got into the definition, but um, of of Christ energy. But on a more practical understanding, um, um, now that we know Jesus is the breath, and we have the definition of Christ energy, how does the breath and Christ energy come together? Um, just in a little bit more detail, because basically we're talking about it now. When we talk about the consciousness through the breath, we understand it as a whole. But I guess more detail from you would be appreciated. Still there, Lee? Yeah, I'm here, Well, Oh, okay. I guess a little bit more detail in terms of uh, uh, what's the, uh, how does Christ uh, in, in the breath, Jesus the breath, and Christ come together oh, as okay, Jesus exactly. Christ. Right. Okay. Well, Christ symbolizes consciousness. Um, mm-hmm. The anointing of DMT being produced by the pineal gland um, mm-hmm. is what produces, as we know, a psychedelic consciousness. Um, mm-hmm. So Christ symbolizes um, that excretion of melanin from the pineal gland. That's Christ. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. The soul being embedded inside of the pineal gland symbolizes. Um, an aspect of, of Jesus or his rule um, in that particular sense. And as we know, um, when you get into occult teachings, um, we find that Jesus, if you read Kabbalistic teachings, Alice of Crawley, um, the writers of Alice of Crawley, um, in there he speaks about 888 and how geometrically uh, when you do numerology, it is equivalent to Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if you get the Kabbalistic Encyclopedia by Godwin, mm-hmm. he also speaks about mm-hmm. how 888 is Christ, or in particular, mm-hmm. Jesus. So we find out that when you go to the periodical chart, just like we did with 666, and find out that it was 6 protons, 6 neutrons, 6 electrons, which is carbon, well, we found out that 888 is another number in which that, Kabbalistically, it means um, eight protons, eight neutrons, eight electrons, which is oxygen. Mm. So it is telling you that in order to activate the Jesus Christ principle or to tap into higher consciousness or deeper consciousness, whichever way you want to say mm-hmm. it, is by way of mm-hmm. the breath, which acts as a mediator between the lower and the higher self or between the mm-hmm. resurrection of mm-hmm. the Kundalini. Mm-hmm. Which is the mother god mm-hmm. principle, um, mm-hmm. you know, and her son, which is symbolic to Heru, which is the soul in the pineal gland. Hence, the black Madonna and, and child, as we would see throughout 200 mm-hmm. countries. That's what that's sim- actually symbolic to. And the reason why the mm-hmm. Catholics worship Mary and call Mary the mother of God, because that's talking about the Kundalini energy. Just like the mm-hmm. Greek speaks about the fact of Sophia um, being, um, mm-hmm. you know, the mother of um, of God, uh, Ogo, which mm-hmm. is Abdullah Bra, mm-hmm. um later on within mm-hmm. the mythology. Ogo mm-hmm. um, actually being um, the son of Amma, you know, and um, and if we go even further with the, um, you know, um, mythologies, it takes you, um, you know, into the Christ story with no more being the Christ, um, mm-hmm. you know. So we see that in the Dogon mythology. We see that with the Greek or the Gnostic um, mythology. We see the same theme over and over again, and it ties right back wow. to the science of breath once again. Is that mm-hmm. um, by breathing properly, um, you produce uh, what is called 
um, the awakened Heru, uh, which would mm-hmm. be Heru the Elder. When you read about there's two mm-hmm. Heru, um, two forms of Heru. You have Heru Pakrat, and you have mm-hmm. um, Heru Ur. Um, Heru mm-hmm. Ur is the Elder. Heru Pakrat is like baby Jesus, as we would say. But um, that is that is that is the baby Jesus symbolic to being wrapped and swallowed in the clothing. That's the um, soul inside of the pineal gland. It hasn't awakened yet because mm. um, our set has not awakened or saw to produce, mm. um, um, you know, this babe. You know, this babe. Is, okay. as we would say. Um, but mm. through mm-hmm. our set raising herself up, you know, who um, mm-hmm. was wrapped three and a half times core, you had the base of the spine. He awakens our saw. You know, to become the awaken or the awoken um, um, consciousness, as we say, or opener. You know, which is you know, which is Heru. You know, and mm-hmm. after you know, um, so many times of mastering those techniques, um, you produce what is called Heru Ur, which is Heru the Elder, or the Great mm-hmm. Light, as they say, which is actually talking about the um, sun disk around the top of the head or the ha- or the halo. Um, mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. actually what all of this is coming from, and that comes through the excretion of the um, DMT and the penoline, um within the brain, in which that helps with the formation of this sun disk around the top of the head. And this is how mm-hmm. you know that you have actually awoken and you're in the presence of someone who is holy because you can actually feel, um, um, in, in some sense, or see that particular aura around the top of their head. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So now... Okay, now what's interesting? And that's real Christ. And I say that's real Christ consciousness. Real Christ consciousness. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, um, interesting because you said that truly the Christ is basically melanin uh, or, or right. DMT in the melanin, which is a spirit mm-hmm. molecule in the melanin. Is, would that right. be akin to what they call the anointing oil or or uh, that is, or that, that crystal oil? That's the okay. crystals. That's the oil. Right. So, so yet what, another what code. Is, you know, within the code. Within the code, it's called crystal. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So yet another code uh, in, uh, about melanin. You know, and right. you know, that's the one of the things I talk about is what I do notice when I, uh, far and wide, when I study occult books, because uh, even though most black people understand melanin is just their skin color, um, um, you'll hear all of these codes for melanin. Kia, uh, Bobby actually did a whole lecture, um, and I think I have it. Up, yeah, I do have it up on my um, occult lectures on YouTube. A whole lecture where he went through all the occult aliases for melanin. And he once told me he was like, white people will get so much further if they just if they just study fucking melanin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They're trying so hard to stay out of saying melanin because it's been attributed to black people based upon us thinking this is our skin color. But so right. you always have to be on the lookout. That's one, um, you know, correspondence. And, and and if you don't know what correspondence is, you've been listening to uh, almost three hours of Aleem doing what we call correspondence. He's mm-hmm. taking one story and connecting it to another understanding or another science, corresponding them. And then he's even taken one story and show you how it's layered in three and four stories. That's the first or one of the first steps you need to be to, to be a successful conscious decoder. To, to be a researcher or a studier, you need to be able to correspond these stories to see what the symbology means throughout each story. And when you're able to do that, yet, first of all, the understanding gets smaller, the stories and the work gets smaller, because as soon as you hear a story, you'll be able, for what you don't understand, you'll be able to bridge it to the concept that you do understand. So what what is out of your league suddenly becomes in your league based upon the shit that you did study and understand, based upon correspondence. So you must correspond. So when you hear things like anointing oil, you, you hear Aline talk about DMT in such detail, those are the things that should be going off as alarms in your head. And sorry about that rant, but I want to also ask to go into a little bit more detail about the periodic table of elements as you did, because one of the things I did notice, um, on the periodic table of elements, 
the first thing you hear is the 666 thing, that where this devil, this beast um, um, comes from, this idea that the devil 666 <clears throat> is that um, it really just corresponds to six protons, six neutrons, six electrons, which make up man. So man is the beast. Now, I said, okay, that makes sense, but maybe, you know, coincidence. Which we, I know there's no such thing, but I was basically looking for more. And what I found is that um, in Dogon and, and even in Kemet, most of the gods start with AU, 